shall he not do it and have he spoken and he shall not make it good that's right so it's just to show you that the heavenly father is not a man that he shall lie so whatever he said is going to come to pass man it is going to happen it is written in jeremiah as well as in the book of revelation it's written all over the scriptures that babylon the great america is going to be destroyed man okay america is going to be destroyed thus says the bible if you say you believe the bible you have to repent man all right whether you believe it or not it's going to come to pass because it, it is written man somebody get isaiah 55 verse 11 whoever got it go ahead it's like Isaiah yeah. chapter 55 verse 11 it says so shall my word be that god spoke out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void that's right it shall accomplish that which i please and it shall prosper and see where to i sent it that's right man they're speaking about the prophecies man okay another brother can get amos uh what is that amos 2 not amos the book of um what is that Habakkuk, where it says yep you got it brother and if, if, brother if not God, come on man i got right. jeremiah 28 please come on, let the brother get that up first come on, come on, brother. before i get uh have a real quick come on, bring it up brother. uh back in second verse 15 it says the incredulity if you go into the word the dictionary for incredulity it says the quality or state of being incredulous the inability or unwillingness to believe mm -hmm. and that's the state of our people they, they're either unwilling to believe because they have no faith or they, they don't have the ability to believe because the Lord has blinded their heart, man. They're dark in their countenance, man. So two-thirds of our people are are, are, are lost, man, because they basically because they have no faith. And 2 Corinthians 15 says, oh, for all the unfaithful shall die in the unfaithfulness. 
but this is Habakkuk chapter 2, uh, verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, you know, I'll start from the top. Habakkuk 2 and 1, I will, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Hey, doesn't it say in Ezekiel the third chapter how the heavenly father likens him unto watchmen, man? Okay, so we're gonna stay upon our watch, man. Constantly being indulged in these prophecies. Constantly, like it says in what is that, uh, sick, uh, the book of Corinthians, to meditate. You know, uh, that's not that one, but to, the point is we're gonna constantly watch, man. Keep going, brother. Verse two, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an important time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. It's lying, brother. Read verse two again. Habakkuk two and two. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. That's right. So hey, when we come out on the house of the vow, as well as when we make these lessons, hey, we have to break these scriptures down to a T as we have been given from our elders and apostles, man. They say that he that runs that read it, bro, you heard from that yeah. scripture, man. All right? So we have to make these things clear unto the hopeful elect. You know, it says that how we are officials of men, right? Yep. You know, go ahead, brother. So like, Verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. It's speaking about the prophecy, man. It shall it shall speak and not lie, man. Prophecy. A prophecy is speaking, man. We're seeing the rumors of war, man. We're seeing even the signs of the times, man. Last, a couple weeks ago, it was the coldest it's ever been, you know, in Florida, man. And that's uh, that's a sign in the scriptures, man. You know, forewarning the return of our Lord. How we want, brother? Y'all watch my shot, brother. Yeah, watch my shot. I got to see. Go ahead, brother. You can bring it out. You got it? All right, come on. Okay. This is Matthew. This is Matthew chapter um, 24. Start at, starting at verse, um, let's start at verse 3. It says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and, and of the end of the world? And Yahweh shall answer and say unto them, Take heed that no man deceive thee. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Hamashiach, and shall deceive many. It says, And ye shall hear, hear of war, like I read it again. And you shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. It says, For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All of these are the beginning of sorrows. All right. And so, you know, the disciples came into your house side. They were basically asking, asking your house side, All right, what is the time of the end of the world, man? And y'all started breaking it down, man. And we've seen these things happen and play in front of our eyes, man. Why? Why? Because, you know, the Lord bless us with the eyes to see. But we can see, you know, you know, rumors of war. The Lord is stirring up the need. All right? Pestilence. You know, storms of tempest. All these things are things that y'all said, you know, the prophets are um, told us through the Spirit. And it's playing out, man. All right? Why? Because we're in the latter times, man. It says, in the days, in the days of Noah shall also be likened in the days of the son of man. The son of man is speaking about Yahweh Shah. Right. Now in the days of Noah, what happened, man? The heavenly father was dealing with Noah and his household. And when you read the book of Hebrews, it says how Noah's moved with fear. All right, so how much more us brothers in these times, man? You know, concerning the prophecies, man. This is second edge of chapter nine. I'm gonna go straight to the point. Second edge nine is five. For like as all that is made in the world hath the beginning and the end, and the end is manifest. And if you go into the word manifest in the dictionary, it says uh, to make clear or evident to the eye or the understanding, to show plainly. It's plain to the to the men of the Lord, the, the elect, that we are at the end of the world, man. Everything that has a beginning has an end, all right? And, it, and, it's, and the end is manifest. So it's plain for the people who have eyes to see. But everybody else that doesn't see it, they think that this kingdom's going to last forever, man. Babylon's is about to be destroyed. America's about to be destroyed by thermonuclear missiles, man. That's right. That's right, man. And it's, it's plain to see. It's manifest, man. That's but right. if you can't see it, you, you're going to fall with it. Because right. Yahweh watching our side is only dealing with the elect, man. Right. He's only dealing with that very small number, man. Those are the individuals that and his word is clear to. They have the ears to hear and the eyes to see. Can a brother give Ezekiel the seventh chapter, start from the top, bottom, from the top? Yeah, 
while the brother gets that, the brother is talking about how it's clear to see, you know, the elect don't got to be uh, persuaded, you know, months on months, years on years on what is the truth and uh, the time of the Lord coming back, you know. And then the brother earlier, he read, uh, Things of that sort. And that's that's really the problem now. I want to bring out this quick precept. The book of not actually bring out the example. Bring this out for No, no, no. You have to. I want to bring it out. All right, come on. Book of Second Peter, chapter three, <clears throat> verse eleven. Seeing that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person are you to be in all holy conversations and godliness? You know, so in the times that we are now, man. This is what we're supposed to be harping on, man. That's the spirit of the Alpha Shah, you know, to be in prophecy, you know, to be in tune with these things, you know, to pretty much make these things a normal part of our conversation. Not not women, not drugs, not 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 lusting after the flesh and things of that sort, but what's to come because that's how we get ready. And uh, that that scripture gets ready with the conversation. That the what conversation that conversation is going into what? A way of life, matter of life, man. You know? Not being indulged or not being hand in hand with this current society, man. You know? <clears throat> Brother got something to bring it up. Come on. Uh, real quick, this is Zechariah 13 and 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord shall smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. Mm. And the brother just brought the priest and said, All of these things shall be dissolved. That, that's that's literal, man. America is literally about to be dissolved and turned into a desert, man. You're not going to see nothing but the smell of smoke, man, and desert animals. That's right. If I'm saying, why is that? All right. What do you they did to the um, Mason and Grizzle, man? All right. Somebody got, matter of fact, what is that? Isaiah. I'm going to bring this one out real quick. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 16. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. So like the brother said, the Lord has put in these scientists' the scientists mind to create these ICBM nuclear missiles, man. And what does ICBM mean, man? It means intercontinental hey, ballistic missiles, man, meaning that they can fly from continent to continent, man. Okay? And it says... I have I have created the waster to destroy. And that's the purpose of these missiles, man, to destroy. And like your brother said, Babylon the Great is going to be what? Babylon the Great is going to be a desert. How do we know that? Let's go to Isaiah, uh, the 13th chapter. Can the brother start at Isaiah chapter 13? And start at verse, um, start at verse 16. Isaiah 13, verse 16. Bob, what's up? Isaiah chapter 13, verse 16. It says, their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Mm -hmm. their, their houses shall be spoiled in their wives' ravages. Woo, so hey, this is about to happen, man. Right. Doesn't it say in Isaiah the, 30, the 32nd chapter, you know, rise, Isaiah 32, verse 9, rise up, ye women that are at ease, man. All right, because it's about to be bad times here in Babylon the Great, man. Whether you believe it or not, keep going, brother. It says, verse 17, behold, I will stir up the meads against them which shall not which shall not regard silver and as for gold they shall that they shall not delight in it that's right the means is talking about the russians man so yeah how about small shots putting the spirit on these russians these knees okay to be focused on one thing man and that's having babylon the great destroyed man that's the only purpose that's why the heavenly father's putting the spirit on putin and his uh his war general and what's the war general's name man well, does anybody, I know it has to do with something Armageddon. with Armageddon or uh, General, Armageddon. Gen General Armageddon, man. Uh, All right. So uh, this is so you keep going, brother. It says verse 18, their bows also shall die, dash the young man to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their, their eyes shall not spare children. Mm. So this is the, this is what's coming, man. Right. This is what's coming to Babylon the Great. Okay. It's more for four, bro. Wow. Shit, this is good. We go through the whole chapter right there. 13. Y'all want to? Go ahead, bro. Come on, look at Isaiah chapter 13 began at the top. The verse of it, bro. You already in there. Let him read it. No, no, you go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah start yeah, from the top. Yeah, start from the top. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 
So Isaiah chapter 13, starting verse 1, it says, The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see, to lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain, exalt the voice unto them, shake the hand that they may like, that they may go into the gates of the nobles. That's right. Go ahead, God, and that, 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 that's a vision. Isaiah seen a vision, you know, on that mountain, this government, you know, being Babylon. And that banner is this book, this truth, man. This is what we came here to prophesy, man. This is what we're doing week in and week out. This is that holy conversation, man. This is that bidding unto the marriage for your elect. Right. And that shaking the hands that, make, that this truth may go to the gates of the nobles. That's why brothers have the uh, challenge right now. That's why brothers are going to come through persecution in the time to come. That's why we catch hell. You know, because he saw Edom. This truth is now going on to everywhere, and they can't stop it, man. That's right. It's that age of the unicorn, you know, where, where this thing just caught uh, a snowball effect. You know, you had those men years ago jumping out on the apostle saying, you know, we spent billions of dollars, you know, to hinder this truth. But yet, you know, hey, because because it's of the truth and it's because of it's Salak, it's because it is of the most high. The most high said nothing could be against, could be done against the truth or for the truth. That's right, brother. Hey, to further back you up too, shaking the hand, you know, the brother right about the point about going into the gates of the nobles, but shaking the hand is like when you're rebuking somebody. Like imagine you're rebuking somebody and you pointing your finger in their face that's shaking that hand man you know cry loud spare not so we're gonna go into the gates of the nobles all right like the brother said you know you got trump he said don't listen to the prophets of the doom going to show you they paying attention to the men of the lord you know what i'm saying and, and like the brother said they striking channels to, yep to the point where uh the men of the lord are gonna get thrown in them fema camps and have to go before governments and officials yeah how i said that We're, we shall be brought before kings and governors you know for my name's sake roughly paraphrasing That's right. You can't fear no man that can take your life, man. You gotta fear who takes your soul, cause so what? You saw Esau. I mean, Salak. I was gonna say Esau, Edom. So what? He takes your life or your head off of a guillotine, right? Using a guillotine. In the kingdom, you can do the same thing to that guy. Over and over and over. And over. Every time you come back, you kill him as a baby. He come, he come back. He turn thirteen years old. You kill him again. He come back. You get a little bit older. You kill him again. You know, you do whatever the hell you want. So you know, you, we gotta go through. We gotta go through on this temporary stage, man. Know, so the Lord could be uh, exalted. His name could be magnified. That's right. Exactly. Let me grab something right quick. It's in the book of uh, Second Maccabees, I believe. You know, a story with the mother and her children. You know, she said, fear not this tormentor. You know, that's the spirit of Esau either. All right, because when the persecution does happen, that's what he's going to try to do. He's going to try to torment you, man. You know, uh, bind you up. You know, try to cast you in the prison. Try to, you know, uh, Torment you, man. What scripture is it? I think second, 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 that I may receive thee again in mercy with thy brethren. Woo. So that, hey, that's the spirit that we have to come. I mean, that's the spirit we have to be in in these trying times, man. Okay, to fear not this tormentor. And if we have to lay our life down for you, how about Shemal Shah, then so be it, man. Yep, yep. Because, you know, Esau, Edom could destroy, they could take your life, man, but they can't take your spirit, man. Right. So the, the Father of the Spirit could easily put you back into the world immediately, man. And you can come back in that in that even my lifetime and destroy his ass, man. But uh, this is the end anyway. Let me get a real quick. Uh, First Thessalonians chapter four. Mm -hmm. First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter four, starting at verse thirteen. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye saw or not, even even as others which have no hope. And those that are asleep, those are the ones that have lost their lives, man. But you're not going to lose. You're not, don't lose hope for the ones that, that died in the home for the Mashiach's name, man. All right? Because they're going to be the ones first to rise. Verse 14. For if we, if, if we believe that Yahushai died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yahushai will the Most High bring with him. All right? So if you die, you know, doing the work, if you die serving the Lord, some brothers have uh, lost their lives in, in this ministry, man. But we, we, we don't stress about that. Yet we may mourn. We know that they're in great hands. They're in better hands than they can ever be in this kingdom, man. All right? And they're going to get the first fruits the money y'all are trying to turn, man. Uh, it's a win-win situation, man. You know, you'd rather die in the truth than die in the world, man. Period. Verse 15. 
For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of the Most High, and the dead in Mashiach shall rise first. All right, so lose your life, you know, is a beautiful thing in the sight of the Lord if we do it for his sake, man. Just like the Lord lost his life for our sakes, man. All right? But at the end of the day, Lord willing, you know, at the end of the day, all the elect will receive salvation anyway. All the elect going to get the first fruits of the kingdom anyway. All right? So whether you have to die on this side or, or wait until the Lord returns, it's all the will of the Lord, man. The Lord's with it. Who could be against it, man? All right, also, you got to think about this. I think it's Revelation 14, verse 13. It says how our works are going to follow us, man. That's right. Even if you have to lay your life down. You yep. see, when you deal with Esau, Edom, if you break your leg or break your arm and you can't continue to work, you can't lay it off, man. Yep. But concerning your how about your shot, if you, let, if you have to perish in this life, hey, your works are going to follow you, man. So that's a benefit of serving the Lord, man, as well as the others. It's just like actors, man. Athletes spend their whole lives training to make it to the professional league. One injury takes them out, and they're forgotten about the outcast of society, man. The Lord won't deal with his servants like that, man. Mm -hmm. In Revelation, the 20th chapter, verse 4, it reads, And I saw thrones that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of God, and for the word of the Most High, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, Neither have received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they live and reign with Mashiach a thousand years. Right. So men are gonna have men are gonna be beheaded. Just to show you that those guillotines are in fact real. Okay, but it says what? How they're gonna reign. You know, reign with your You know, live with you know, be a monk Yahweh man. So Yahweh Shah is not gonna lightly, you know, regard you know, men that do have to lay their life down, they're gonna receive a reward for that, man. You know? Go ahead, brother. This is Hebrews chapter six, verse 10. It says, for the most high is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor and love, which ye have sued toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And the Lord, the Lord, like what the scripture says, Lord, not unrighteous will all the works be done towards his name, man. Are right, going on a highway by feeding his sheep, you know, as he said to do, man. The Lord's not gonna forget all of that, man. So if you know you have brothers that are gonna die on this side, but hey, man, the Lord gonna take them up first, man. That's comfort, man. All right. He not come even to when Esau do come against so him. The Lord, you know, gonna lift up a standard too. All, all these words we speak through the Spirit is all of comfort, man. All right. It's, it's, it's no new situation with Yahweh Shimon's side, man. Yeah. This is uh, Matthew the uh, sixth chapter, verse twenty-five, and it reads it's backing up. You know, Brothers bring it down. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. You know, that's backing up the brothers, man. You know, like the brother Yashikala saying, man, it's better to die in the truth than to die in the world, man. All right? You know, it's better to die doing the work, man. All right? You know, and we already know the rewards that we're looking forward to at the end of this thing, man. You know, eternity, immortality, eternity, man. All right? Don, to add on to that, you know, who's your, um, you can read that again, but God. Matthew 16, verse 25. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. God, and we're not trying to save our life, man. We already gave our life up, you know, for the Lord, man. We we, we came to agreement and to realization that we're just surviving and existing out here. You know, we're not living. You know, so we're not striving to we're not trying to make investment or um retirement funds, what they call them. 401k, 401k, you know, we, we're not striving for those things. We're not, I'm not looking here personally. To be here in the next 30 years i'm not trying to raise no children and, and see them grow and, and graduate here you know but you know we lay that down so we can live you know more on i'm good that's gonna happen you know i'm gonna have children lord willing they're gonna grow up but that's gonna be in the kingdom man that's gonna be amongst the elect you know and that new and uh, that new earth that new heaven hey can we finish up on uh, isaiah the 13th chapter um, you know just to you know, finish it off when we get started uh, verse 3, and I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for my anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. And my sanctified ones is uh, in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Before I formed thee in thy belly, I knew thee. Before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee to be a prophet unto the nations. You know, so the Lord's elect, the Lord's prophet, you know, they're they, they going to uh, pretty much tell the forecast of what's to come, which is uh, the war with King by Jehoshaphat. We'll continue on verse 4 for Isaiah 13, brother. All right, come on. Take it. 
back in Isaiah chapter 13, verse 4, it says, The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like, at, like as of a great people, it's a more noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The Lord hosts, musters the host of the battle. All right, see, even, to, you know, what's about to come to pass, even up to the um, drying up the Euphrates, Euphrates River, the Lord is controlling all of that, man. You know, to, to come in of that World War III, man. Okay, the Lord is controlling these armies, man. All right? Yep, and that people that, that saw the great noise, you know what I'm saying, that can also represent the missiles, too. You know, but it, like the brother said, it is the drawing of the armies in World War III, you know, Hamagawan, which is Armageddon in the Hebrew, Mountain of the Troops, you know. They, they come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his of his, his nation to destroy the whole land. And the, the nation is uh, righteous anger. You know? So the anger that the Lord is, you know, that, that's right to be about. You got the right to be anger. And those uh, weapons of destruction is these ICBMs that the brother was doing into intercontinental ballistic, you know, so intercontinental, intercontinental ballistic missiles. The brother said better than I do. So you can go from one continent to the other in a matter of minutes. Right. Minute, 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 minute. Joel 3 and 2, I will also gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and part of my land. All right. No, no. But uh, the Lord is the one, you know, gathering these armies together and bringing them to the valley of Jehoshaphat, man. World War Three is really the war, the the, uh, the Lord's war, man. He already played it out from the beginning to the end, man. He already knows what's gonna happen, man. Right? He's controlling the whole. He's pulling the strings of everybody's love. Because yeah. if that, it was no, 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 that's my fault. Yeah. And that word plea, you go to that word plea, that goes to judge, yep, man. Yep, yep. All right, and it says that the valley of Jehovah's said, you go to that in Hebrew, Yahweh Shabbat, man. You need Yahweh Judges, man. All right, judge me, why? Because what the uh, these nations did. You know, unto the nation of Israel, man. All right, you go to the Psalm 83, list all those nations, man. Start with Esau, Edom, man. All right, they all laid hands on the um, nation of Israel, man. Uh, all right. And the brother said, uh, this is the Lord's war. That's right, man. Because if it was up to man, you know, man already be trying to make truth. They already be trying to make agreement, hey, like, let's not do this nuclear battle. Because, you know, after that, uh, there's no more humanity, you know. So that's how you know it's up to the Lord, man. If it goes up to God, you know, if it goes up to man, ain't no way, you know, we, we, Doing, you know, nuclear ICBM missiles. Hey, that's why in, uh, I, I think it's either Isaiah where it says, yeah, Isaiah 13, matter of fact. I'll, 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 let the scripture, I'll let the scriptures talk. I'll let the scriptures you talk. Know, Isaiah 13, when it comes out, bring it on. Yep, come on, come on, Lord willing. Uh, God, God. Yeah. You continue on verse 6, huh? All right. It says, How ye, for the day of the Lord is that hand, it shall come as destruction from the Almighty. All right, we can see it, man. All right, we, we see all these prophecies coming to pass, you know, you know, you got Putin so so hyped up, you know, to press that button. All right, which that's of the Lord. You know, you got even to the brothers haven't seen, you know, they have a little choir singing death to, death yeah, to, yeah, yeah, death yeah, to yeah. America. That's in their spirit, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's also showing that we here to the end, man. Uh, the brother said we can see it. And not only can we see it, we can see it better than the prophet Isaiah uh, prophesied at this time. God. We can see it more clearly. More specific, more detailed. Even though we don't know the hour, the day that the Son of Man is coming, but hey, we damn sure know what's going on. Why are you about to know what's up? Verse seven. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. Mm -hmm. Why is every man's heart gonna melt? Not only are they gonna see, he's they're gonna see the the coming of Yahweh Shah. Yep. You know, Yahweh Shah is coming. Revelation 1 verse 7, how every eye is going to see him. They're also going to see those eyes. Uh, they're going to see what they uh, Esau called. You know, and you're going to be destroyed in them times, man, because Yahweh Shah is only coming for his elect out of the nation of Israel, man. Uh, quick pre, Luke 21 and 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And Earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be in a power great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth not. 
Oh, much, much you know, it's a, before the summer man even comes, people are gonna be having faith apart now. People gonna be passing out, having heart attacks before the summer man even comes, man. So when he gets here, it's over. And their hearts it's like right. it. now you saw uh, some type of pleading for that they, when they won't find it. Right. Go ahead, right. So like your friend interrupted no, you. That's my fault. But um the scriptures also say how their hearts shall shall melt. Hey, that's literal too. Yep. <laughs> you can't even look at the sun. <laughs> yep. And that's supposed to be eight minutes away of sunlight. You know, that's how old it is. So you go ahead and try to look at us being ripped you know, that's the vicinity. Look at it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whoever looks at that shit is going to blind them. And you know a movie scene I always quote is when we come to camp. That scene from the Terminator, the second, when they were, her heart really melted. Yep. Her face melted, everything melted. Even her bone, her bone structure. She literally melt. Like if you if you leave an ice cream cone in, in, in the sun, the shit just melts. That's exactly what's going to happen. Yep. And when she was on the fence. <laughs> That's a good scene. Go ahead, brother. Zechariah 14 and 12. And this shall be the plague where with the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. So that's the that's telling what's going to happen. You know, when those missions, those ICBM actually hit, man. Okay? Verse 8, back in Isaiah chapter 13, it says, And they shall be afraid, Pains and sorrow shall take hold of them, and they shall be in pain as a woman that travelled. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Their faces shall be as flames, man. See what's about to happen to this planet Earth, man. All right, this is rightly, you know, this is true judgment. You know, like brother said, indignation, righteous hatred, the hatred that the heavenly Father has for Esau and Babylon the Great. Okay, the things that are about to happen to this Earth. Are going to be righteously a uh, president if you understand what I'm saying. And why is it going to be righteous? Huh? It's going to be righteous because uh, what is that? Amos? Did somebody get Amos nine and eight? All right. How the eyes of the Lord are upon this simple kingdom. Uh -huh. You know, even though that could be, you know, speaking about the homeland Israel, but it could be. It can apply to Babylon and Great Man. You you have a state, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. There's a there's a city. Called Sin City. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Sin hey. City. Go ahead, bro. And what did they slap you? What did they say about uh, fucking Sin City? What happens in Vegas? Stays Stays in Vegas. Vegas. Uh, hey, you know it's crazy too. Yeah. In Las Vegas, right over a strip club, a chariot dropped down. Huge uh -huh. chariot. I sensed it in the channel if y'all really saw it, but it was a huge chariot. You could see clearly it was a chariot, man. It was red. No denial. Yep. There was no way to be like, what is that? That's a plane. Nah, no, it was a clear chariot. It had a red light on it, and it had like a like an orange type of fire uh, 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 kind of like outlines around it, right? And people was coming out. It was all over, you know, TikTok and whatever. But, you know, hey, you know, they have a cherry. They even got, what's that thing called in uh, that army base that's next to us? Area 51. Area 51. Yeah, yeah, there, you know, all the, you know, cherry size and whatnot. You know, we saw trying to create their forms of cherry and whatnot. But, man, Las Vegas, man, it's going to catch a, 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 a beautiful missile going to hit Las Vegas, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a couple. That's a couple. <laughs> it's a couple cities that's gonna get a little bit. You got yep. California, yep. Atlanta, definitely Florida, New York, New York, Miami, all of Babylon, all, all of Babylon, two hundred you know, million, yeah, two hundred million, right about what fifty-two states. Uh, <laughs> that's why the scripture is saying Revelation, the slain of men shall be seven thousand, man. Right. Meaning completion is gonna be a completion number of people through in this place. If you left on the shores of America when the missiles go off. You out of there, man. That's why in the book of Job it says, it shall go ill with him that is left in his tabernacle, man. That's right. That's right. Um, somebody got that Amos? Yeah, I got it. Go ahead, brother. Nine and eight. Sure. Um, this is Amos, the ninth chapter, verse eight. And it reads, Behold, the eyes of the Lord, Yahweh, are upon the simple kingdom. And the eyes are what? The eyes of the Lord, you know, are the chariots, man. You know? Keep going, brother. And I will destroy it from the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, said the Lord Yahweh. That's right, because the heavenly Father again is only going to have, He's only going to have mercy on the elect as well as the one third man. Okay, and that's the house of Jacob. House of Jacob is talking about the elect, the one hundred forty-four thousand out of the twelve tribes, as well as the one third. 
brother get Revelation the seventh chapter, starting from the top, man. Just to show, it says, I will. It's a lot. It says, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, man. That's right. Okay, so you're gonna have deliverance. It's gonna it's balance. You're gonna have destruction, and then you're gonna have deliverance, man. Left hand and. Uh, that's why we got to be in the spirit of prophecy because if we don't want these things to come to pass, of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind shall not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. That's right, and that wind is speaking about again, it's speaking about the missiles, man. Right now, we outside and we feel the wind. So it's not talking about literal wind, it's talking about those missiles, man. And you have the angels literally holding off our the destruction until what? The elect is sealed, man. Keep on, bro. Verse 2. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living power, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth. That's right. And the angel. So that angel. Going back to the ceiling, can a brother get Ezekiel the ninth chapter and start at the the, the, the fourth verse, man? Because that ceiling is important. You got to yeah, break it out, brother. Man, um, just to back up to that, bring up here. Revelation is um, Jeremiah 51, verse 1. Right. It says, Thus says the Lord, yet how about she now inside? Behold, I was raised up against Babylon and against them that won the midst of them that rise against me and destroy them. Right, going back to that one, man. All right. That destruction, man. Oh, I see. I see. Oh, that is strong wit. That lines up beautiful with Revelation the second chapter. Yeah, I'm This is Ezekiel 9, chapter, verse 4. It reads, And the Lord Yahweh said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the man that sighed and that cried. For all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. That's right. Now that mark is going to the word in Hebrew, fa wa, which is a mark is isn't a mark of exception, but that goes back to the ceiling. Okay, that goes back to the ceiling in Revelation the seventh chapter. Read it again, brother. Revelation seven verse two. Uh, the book of Revelation, chapter seven, verse two, and it reads. And I saw another angel as ascending from the east, having the seal of the living power. He cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Keep going. Verse 3, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees. So we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads. That's right. So the elect have to be sealed in order for the destruction to happen, man. Okay? And this sealing comes from what? By hearing the words of Yahweh Shem man. All right, brother, you know, we'll sit here and say that America is about to be destroyed, and nobody will ever ask, well, what are you going to do about it? What, what's your plan? What's your plan? What's your escape from? Right? All right, this is Psalm 5, chapter 1, chapter 5, verse 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him, and made no account of his labors. Right? Our plan is to serve the Lord to the best of our ability. Until he, he deems us worthy enough to obtain salvation, man. That's our escape route, man. But two thirds of our people don't don't they don't want to serve the Lord, man. They'd rather serve Esau Edom. They'd rather have the carnal the carnal payout instead of the spiritual one. But the spiritual one's gonna pay out physically too. Verse two. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear, and they shall be amazed and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation, so far beyond all that they looked for. Right. When we talk about carriers, so-called UFOs, talking about being delivered by the, by the Lord and our Savior, man, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai, man, all right? That's a, that's a strange thing to our people, man. No, it's not. That's a strange thing to our people. It's so far beyond that they, anything they ever hoped for, man. They, they expected a so-called white man to come out of the sky on a literal cloud with his hands out, holding rainbows and so on and so forth. That's what they believe. That shit is fucking strange to me, man. Yep, like, hey. Like, you talk like, like, thirds of doing the work, you know, they ask how much the Lord paying an hour. Yep. And what do people say when they walk by? Y'all get paid for this? <laughs> yeah, we get paid, man. And then they just run away. Oh, no, oh that's what I thought. Yeah. Uh, dumbass nigga. No. Hey. Not on the carnal level. <laughs> Scriptures say, um, lay up your treasures in heaven. Uh, yep, yep. You know? Every man getting paid the same thing, the same thing. Oh, 
brother got a free. This is Isaiah chapter 26, verse 20. This is come my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee, hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. All right. It says, For behold, the Lord Yahweh in my sight, coming out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover its slain, man. All right. So, you know, people, they, they will scoff, man, because they don't understand, man. How are we going to get out of here is through them cherries, man, the so called UFOs, man. That's our vehicles, our salvation, man. That's why it's going to be stranger to them, man. All right. Seeing so called, you know, black. Black so-called Latinos and Native Americans being beamed up the chariots, man. All right? That's how we're going to get saved, man. And those chambers are the chariots, man. That's right. We're hiding ourselves from the indignation, from this place being set on fire, man. Literal fire. Oh, hey, I got a few running up. Like the brother was just talking about when, you know, individuals come up and ask us, are we, are we getting paid? Yeah. This is Luke, <clears throat> chapter 17, verse 5. And the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it shall and it should obey you. But but which of you, having a servant plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him, By and by, where is he come from the field, go and sit down to meet? And you will not rather say unto him, Make ready with wherewith I may sup and gird thyself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Does he thank the servant because he did the things which were commanded to him? I try not. You see, so we're not even supposed to even, you know, expect the reward because we're supposed to do this work. But Yahweh is so merciful, he's going to give us a reward. but we're supposed to do this, man. Go to the book of Ecclesiastes, the 13th chapter, I mean the 12th chapter, the 13th verse, man. This is our duty, right? Verse, wow. verse 10. And it says, so likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded to you, say we are unprofitable servants, we have done that which was our duty to do. You see? So let's just show you that we're supposed to be doing this work, but you have wicked niggas out here thinking that when you serve the Lord, you're supposed to get something in return, man. Go ahead, brother. This is uh, Proverbs, the first chapter, verse 22, and it reads, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity, and the scorn of delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge? That, I mean, that's these niggas, man, right? These people out here are so simple-minded, man, right? Talking about, oh, are you getting paid for this, right? They, 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 they're just real simple-minded people out here, man. Really, that, that's a that's a slave mentality, man. Really, uh, you you only do anything for 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 a few shekels, man. Right, 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 right. Hey, didn't it say in Proverbs the first chapter, "How long shall you simple ones love simplicity?" Okay, my people are simple, and that's why the Lord is going to deal with the elect, man. Those that have the the true understanding of what's really going on, man. All right, this wisdom that we have been given from above from high. It's going to preserve us in the time we're coming into, man. As it is written, Ezekiel, I mean, Isaiah, the 33rd chapter, the 6th verse says, hey, this wisdom and knowledge is going to be the stability of our times, man. So, that's why these simple-minded niggas, you know, they can't understand the higher things or, I should say, the higher vibrational uh, uh, things of these scriptures, man. They can't get it because they're so simple-minded, man. Why are you trying to tell the drink about a chariot? Then I'm like, what? They, it, 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 it's like the brother uh, my father was saying, it, it, it's so far-fetched to them, man, right? It's just their mind is too simple to understand these things. That's right. That's why, um, man, I lost my friend. Go ahead, bro. I got a free. This is uh, Malachi 3 and 14. Ye have said it is vain to serve the Most High, and what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts, man? And now we call the proud happy, yea, they that work wickedness are set up, yea, they that tempt the most high are even delivered. You see, so that's the spirit of two thirds of our people coming. They're like, what profit is it for us to serve the Lord? What benefit are we getting to serve the Lord? You know, the niggas who are in the world, they 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 win it, you know, in their eyes, right? You know what I'm saying? But that's the thing, two thirds, they get their goodies until they don't, man. 
all that shit getting ready to be cut off through the spirit, man. You know, right now, two thirds is winning on this side in the flesh, but they about to be losing when all hell breaks loose, man. That's right, man. That's why I wanted to say that when last shall be first, right. and the first shall be last, man. You know? Jeremiah chapter 4, I'm reading the KJV and I'm reading the NLT. It says, For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sought as children, and they have none understanding. They are white to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. And the NLT, I like the NLT because it, it brings it out plain. All right, it says, my people are foolish, and they do not know me. It says the Lord, they are stupid children <laughs> who have no understanding. They, they are clever enough at doing wrong, but they have no idea how to do right. And that's how our people is, man. Are we? They, they, they're fucking stupid, man. Yeah. All right. That's right, man. Hey, yeah, that's clear right yeah. there, man. You know, watch to do evil, but to do good, they have nothing to understand. It. Yeah. You got your read? Yeah. Um, Job twenty-one, yeah. verse fourteen. He says, "Therefore they fear from the Most High, depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of Thy ways." Now, of course, we know originally they're talking about the wicked. Two thirds of our people, they take longer than telling you the wicked. But they also have the mindset of what's the purpose of serving Yahweh Shah. For free? Yeah. Uh, then, so, so lot, yeah. Verse 15, what is the Almighty that we should serve him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto him? You know, so that's the mindset of our people also. Like what, what profit is it to pray to the Lord and serve Yahweh Shah? And also wisdom of Solomon on to the third chapter. Talks about you know the wicked having just the ungodly having the mentality of you know let's, let's live our life you know, we don't know you know what our life will be tomorrow and that's just the mentality that, that uh, America you know pushes you know, yeah, you know, Alexander Crowley's you know, prayer whatever I was gonna say that's true man that's the mindset of shape man they got that do as thou will spirit that how is this gonna benefit me you know what I'm saying I'm gonna do what I want to do and you know what I'm saying that's the mindset of shape man that's what they have man they they on this side you're gonna have a very uh, profitable business on this side man but hey in reality look when you come to serve the lord man you catch it out you won't be going through it you don't have to be having time you can have a whole month you broke you shit could be longer than that you man, broke yeah, man. I about to say. You, <laughs> you, you could be going months on ends without being able to find a job man, man. right but the christian church ain't gonna tell you they say hey bring your time bring your offerings you know the lord gonna make you rich you know keep calling on jc you know that's what they expect when they come to serve Yahweh Bashim Al Shah. Like Scripture tells us, to rock to a womb. You come to serve the Lord, pray yourself for temptations, man. Right? You're going to be catching him. You're going to be going through different trials and tribulations, man. That's all part of what, man. Right. That is true. It's a it's true. There's many suffering, sufferings when you're in this truth, man. You know, you're going to suffer. The Lord is going to put you through the ringer, man. You know, the Lord is going to try your heart, man. That's why it says in the Surah, the second chapter, like the brother just quoted, if thou come to serve the Lord, what does it say? To, to prepare yourself for temptation. And what is temptation? To tempt you, to try you, man. You know, the book of Micah says that what? How we're going to bear the righteous indignation before the Lord. That's little, that's little Ishikar right there. Shalom. 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 You're an Israelite, man. Y'all Israelites. This you, is guys, you guys are the tribe of Zebulon or Issachar. Uh, You're that's Israelites. That's like Zebulon. Brother, he that's came right that. there. He that's wanted to be with his brothers. Hey, he never would have come. I know what I'm getting to. You're right, though. He was out of order, but he is. He, he felt the spirit. He ain't, he he ain't stopped. He was looking for clout. That's why they yeah, right. right, I'm, I'm with the man with the line. He was trying to think about it because he came right next to the sun. He just stood next to him. Yeah, that's true, too. Yeah, that's true. Hey, but that's spiritual. You know, that's that, that's our people, man. Mm. You know, AK, Northern Kingdom, they're our people, too, man. Hey, and, that's, and the crazy thing is, you know, the younger, the younger they are, man, you know, the, the more their spirit naturally gravitates to the truth, man. Right? Yep. right? The minute yep. you saw the truth, it was like his eyes just flared up. He was like, oh, shit. We ain't letting no heathen get that close, though. No, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look, 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 Esau, baby, uh, we're going to hit him with this, the, the, the 
Heisman. Let's get back into it, though. Brothers had a free table. Got a quick free. This Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 14. Is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Why is he spoiled? Right? That's the mindset of our people, man. They'd rather, you know, build up their lives here. Our people will rather have a job than serve the Lord. Well, but you can have a high-paying job in, in Babylon, but your ass is still a slave, man. Your ass is still playing taxes. Your ass is still under, under in, the, in captivity, man. You serve the Lord. We obtain salvation. The whole nation going to eat, man. You have a, a, a slave mindset. You don't have a rulership mindset, man. This 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 uh this vibration that's being pushed out by the Lord. It's about really. It's about rulership, and it's a kingdom-like mindset, man. God. We're trying to have slaves and people under our subjection to put the earth back in its righteous order, man. God, that that <clears throat> the kingdom is this knowledge, man. This wisdom that we have, you know. And the better going into you can have a high-paying job, you can still be a slave. It says this true self sets you free. So yep, yep, yep. really, you know, through the grace of the Lord, we're really free, you know, spiritually. Yep, yep. You know, we're not slaves to the society and to the system. You know, waking up and just falling in line. What we were part of is the no, and a lot of people pay a lot of money to be in the no. That's why your um your most expensive, that's why your uh your books that have the higher concentrated amount of secrecy or volume or knowledge that's where that higher higher paid cost. You know that's why you know those people that have the you know higher thoughts or vibration IQ, you have to pay a lot of money to meet with the people or things like that. So like Grant Cardone, for example, on the lower level. He deals with a lot of uh, real estate and a lot of financial things and has those aspects. And to get close to him or whatever, to get his knowledge, you got to pay a lot of money for his handbooks and things of the sort, you know. But we have the number one highest selling book, man. And not only do we have that, we have the knowledge and understanding and wisdom to go into it and break down and, and grind that meal and, and really uh, eat that whole roll. And a lot of people, you know, we salak you. I'm just say this last part. A lot of people come up. I read the whole Bible. Shit, nigga, I did too when I was in the world. I didn't know nothing. You know, I, I just... I, I saw the Bible. I looked at the Bible. I didn't read and understand and grasp what it meant. You go on up. No, nah, it's just like you were saying. It's like this is insider information, man. Con. Right? So, if and if it's not meant for you, I can give you the whole thing. I could damn near break it down for you. It's not gonna mean. It's con, not gonna con. do nothing. That's fact. That, 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 that's spirit. I was just gonna say that too. Con. Like if somebody was trading stocks, that insider information about a stock that's about to boom. If you don't know how to buy stocks, he can tell you what stock to buy. You won't know what to do with it. Con. Con. So you gotta have the breakdown. How can you understand unless a man break it down to you? Rough and prepare for you. Then you got to have that faith. Shit, you can tell me to invest in Bitcoin four years ago. Bring it out. out. Hebrews you chapter 4, verse 2. Well, to us, let me start at verse 1. Hebrews 4, 1. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. So we have to fear Yahweh Bashmael Shai, man, so that way we don't come short of that promise. For to us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it you see so you know two-thirds they heard the word all right they heard the word along with the one-third but the difference is the one-third had faith to believe in these words man and to apply it you see what i'm saying these words are, are, are do well for us man that's for our wealth for us for our benefit but when you don't believe in these words it's not going to profit you man right and uh, back to your point uh brother Rafael, as far as you know our people are just you know, so those in this world, in this society, you have a thing called paper yokes, man. The elders and the apostles going into it, how none of our people are free. You know, even if you are able to go out here, but you still have a birth certificate, yep. a social security card. You know, if you want to travel to a different country, you have you, you need to have a passport. These are all things that Esau, you know, hold, holds over you. You know, back then we used to be in real shackles and yokes. Right, but now they put it in the form of paper, man. Yep. And then it's gonna be in the new society to come. What are you gonna need in order to live? In order to be a part of the society, you're gonna have to have a karagma, man. Okay, so just to back up your point, bro. That computer yoke. That computer a hey, computer yoke. Uh, the spirit last night. Go ahead. What's somebody got through? Yeah, go ahead, bro. This is Micah chapter two, verse ten. It says, Arise ye in the park, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted, it shall destroy you even with a sort of destruction, man. Our part, part of, part of, you know, coming out of this place is getting out um Babylon mindset, man. And this truth is what actually does that, man. All right, because one, it, it reveals, it reveals to you who's your enemies and how the wicked move, and also it reveals, it reveals to you your true identity, man. All right, and also too, the brother talk, the brother Mahadi Carmel talk about, you know, how certain things you gotta, you know, buy to get the knowledge. But this, this truth is free. Uh, this truth is free, man. All right, but then again, you know, it's all the spirit for you to 
able to understand, man. Quick read back to look about understanding. Acts chapter 8, starting at verse 29. Uh, 29. No, I'll start at verse 30. Acts 8 and 30. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And Philip des and he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with them. Right, you gotta have somebody break it down, man. You, uh, you gotta have somebody, somebody in the spirit break it down to you for you to understand it. But also, you gotta be, you gotta have the spirit as well, man. We sit out here, you know, week in and week out teaching. Nobody, we, people are hearing us, but they don't have the spirit to understand, man. It's really all through the spirit, man. If your eyes are darkened, the, the Lord ain't dealing with you, man. At least not yet. Some people, you know. Have to wake up at certain times everybody has their own time to wake up but yo if you hear week in week out you hear his word all day every every week man the Lord probably the most more likely not dealing with you man that's why in the book of uh, what does it say the apostle paul said for us to speak the same thing see we're all speaking the same language man you know not english but we're all speaking the same language to the point to where when I'm talking to this brother about the scriptures, he understands what I'm saying. You see, we're taking, we're talking to these people in a language that they can't understand, but they still don't perceive what's going on, man. You know? First Corinthians. No, go ahead, brother. First Corinthians 14 and 8. For if the trumpet given an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So likewise ye, except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood. How shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the air. All right. You know, the, the Lord chose certain men to speak certain things, you know, to say certain to say things in a way that's understandable to everybody. Anybody can come up here and do because we are a body, we all have different walks of life. We're able to relate to anybody, break down the scriptures to anybody, man. All right. We can speak words easy to be understood, but if you don't have the understanding to understand it, then there's really no hope. Okay, you gotta preach. Yeah, John 15 and 26, it says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So a person can stand here for an hour, two hours, but if the Holy Spirit not dealing with them, you know, they're not going to get it. They're going to leave here, you know, and have learned anything, nothing, because the you know, Holy Spirit wasn't dealing with them. Right. Hey, that's, that's the spirit. What the scripture talk about, uh, that seed which is sown in a person's heart and that raven comes and plucks away that seed that's like saying you know saying somebody hears the word and then saying distracts them takes that word away from that from their heart man because it wasn't really meant for them but you know through the spirit another thing too right for you dudes who get proud and think that you know everything right there's each brother has their own portion of the faith man the only person that has the full measure of the spirit is your shot himself everyone else has a portion so for you to not be willing to humble down and listen to what another brother has to say or hear another brother's point or, you know, hear a brother break something down through the spirit, you know, you're really missing out, man, because you don't have the full portion. Let's say the Lord only gave you five pieces to the puzzle board and a, and a puzzle board requires 50 pieces. You know what I'm saying? You don't got the full picture. You need other brother's portions to put it all together. That's why I was going to say, he that rebuked the wise man, you know, uh, uh, rebuke a wise man and he will be yet wiser, man. You teach a wise man something, you're going to only add to his knowledge, man. But if you want to be proud and, and not humble yourself down and, and take the rebuke, then you're through, man. Yeah. We see in these latter times, it tells us in Second Peter, the third chapter, how perilous times shall come. You know, how men shall be what? Uh, unthankful, unholy. And we're starting to see them characteristic in these latter times as many men are starting to become unfruitful, man. And that's why we pray to the Lord to do what, man? All right, to, to never cast us away, man, to keep his Holy Spirit upon us, man. You know, making sure that we always remain humble, to always remain to have humility, never to have the spirit of pride, man. You know, what does it say in the book of, um, what is that, Second Ezra, it's how pride, uh, what is that? Uh, Twelve before destruction? Yeah, uh, uh, no, not Second Ezra, Ecclesiasticus or Sirach, the 10th chapter. Um, pride is the beginning of sin. Pride is the beginning of sin, man. You know, when you start to be prideful, hey, Yahweh Shemal Shai ain't going to be dealing with you too much longer, man. Because we got nothing to be prideful, man. You know, that's why, what does it say? Jacob died worm, man. The Lord liked Jacob up to a worm because, and without him, he had nothing, man. Without Yahweh Shemal Shai, we have nothing, man. Worm is defenseless. Right. You know, uh, you want that, Sarah? Yeah, just right quick.
Okay, cause Sirach Kuziaski is ten and nine. Why is Earth the ashes proud? Let me start at verse seven. Sirach Kuziaski is ten and seven. Pride is hateful before the Most High and man, and by both doth one commit iniquity. So both man and the Most High hates pride, man. You know, and it says because of I'm uh, I'm, just, I'm gonna read on because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and reaches God by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. Right. And that's why this kingdom is going to be transferred from uh, Esau to Yahweh, man, and the nation of Israel. Right. Um, verse, you no, you go ahead. Okay, Kyle, verse 9. Why is earth and ashes proud? Right. There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. Mm. For such a one setteth his own soul to sell, because while he liveth, he cast away his vows. I'm going to skip down. Verse 12. The beginning of pride is when one departed from the Most High, mm. and his heart is turned away from his maker. So and when you start to get that pride, when you start to be prideful, and you're departing from Yahweh Hashem Yahweh and we see many cases of this, man. Men start to think, men start to esteem themselves higher than they ought to be, and then what happens? They get removed from the body, man. So we always have to remember two traits that will never go out of season or style is humbleness and humility, man. Quick, three, back you up. Now. First Peter five and five. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility, for the Most High resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of Yahweh Shemel Shai, that he may exalt you in due time. Hey, yeah, so, like it says, man, you know, we got to submit ourselves, man. We, we got to understand order. You know what I'm saying? You younger submit yourselves to the elder, but it also says all of you be subject one to another, because just because you might be elderly over a brother, doesn't mean you practice lordship over him. Doesn't mean you be proud over him either. You know, and you gotta also understand too that just because a just because a brother uh might be younger than you doesn't mean he can't correct you, or it doesn't mean that he can't teach you something, man. So you gotta be such a spirit. You got it, brother. And part of that, you know, a brother rebuking you, scripture says over rebuke is better than secret love, man. Right. You know, a, a brother rebuking you and put it's ultimately a brother putting you on game, man. Hey, Ak, you know, you slacking this or you doing this. That's the ultimate form of love, man. And back to the uh, topic about pride, man. Ain't no reason to be pride, especially within this truth, man. All right, we was taught, you know, through the spirit, man. You know, I got a quick precept. I probably made, made it out. This is First Timothy chapter four, starting verse thirteen. It says, "Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine." It says, "Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the lanes of the hands of the presbytery." All right, so the, the hands of the lanes of the presbytery talking about the body of elders, man. All right, uh, especially for the apostles and others on down, they lay their spiritual hands upon us, man. All right, it's not like, oh, we got the truth of our own selves, man. And we have teachers, man. Okay, it says, meditate upon these things, give thyself holy to them, that they that thy prophecy may, that thy prophecy may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing this shall both save thyself and them not hear thee, man. Another thing, too, you know, so as you, you learn, you know, it's not for you to keep for yourself, but also to teach onto others too, man. All right. All right, bro. And I got quick precept I want to bring out, man, because you know, brothers going into you know the pride, you know, being uh, uh, humble. All right. And this is a Psalm to be a Psalm to be a thirty-seven chapter, verse eleven, and it reads, "But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace, man." And that's what's gonna happen. Meek shall inherit the earth, man. Right, right? Not the prideful, right? The meek shall inherit the earth, man. So the meek and the lowly, man. All right, that's the that's the type of spirit that's a, that the Lord is looking for, man. Right, like the scripture says, also, you know, pride go before destruction, man. Right. So have being in that prideful spirit, so it leads to your demise ultimately, man. All right. I got a quick for you. This is um first Corinthians chapter four, starting at verse uh six. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. For who maketh thee to defer from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why didst thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? You see, so a lot of Jake be coming in that self-made spirit. A lot of Jake be acting like, yeah, I got it on my own. 
you know, this off the muscle, all types of shit. But really, we got it from your house. Watching my shots, we said, man can receive nothing. Spirit. Oh, you got that? John 3 and 27. John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Call him my shot. That's right, man. And I think in that same chapter 2, it talks about the portraits of the spirit. And how shall it give him the fullness? If I'm not mistaken. It might be either up or further down. John 3. Because it says the Lord gave him the spirit without measure. Yep, that's what I was going to bring out earlier. Right. You know, that's the spirit. Though. The spirit. Um, John 3 and verse. Uh, oh, yep. Yep, here's uh, John 3 and verse 34. It says, For he whom the Most High have sent speaketh the words of the Most High, for the Most High giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. Right, talk about our Lord Yahweh Shai. He got the full portion of the spirit, man. So, and even Yahweh Shai ain't proud, man. Yahweh Shai said, "Learn of me, by I am meek and lowly." You know, so so I, I, we're trying to be more like Yahweh Shai. We have to learn to be more meek and more lowly, man. That doesn't mean you can't be confident. That doesn't mean you can't have boldness in the Lord. But you gotta have that balance and humility. Scriptures say, "The greater thou art, the more humble thyself." Man, brother had that too. No, I was gonna uh, okay, God. <laughs> Hey, I got this, uh, this, I'm going to let y'all talk. Y'all brothers got something? No, I was going to say, backing y'all brothers up, how Yahweh Shah, you know, the greatest, you know, example that we do have, it says how he came in the form of a servant. Right. You know, just to show y'all he was lowly, he was brought low for our sakes, man. So how much more, how much more us, how much more do we have to act, you know? The yeah. servant is a slack. Nope, you, you got, got it. it. You was talking. You got it. The servant is not greater than his master. That's right. I was out washing the disciples' feet, man. What about many, many other other? Yeah, I was out healing people, man. It says how the Lord didn't come up to be to be ministered, but to minister. You know? Right. Uh, somebody got a preacher? Uh, 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 so I read three and eighteen. The greater thou art, the more humble thyself, and thou shalt find favor before the Lord. Right. Right. So even if you are considered great, you should humble yourself, man. All right. Because uh. Really, you didn't get. You have nothing that you obtained by yourself. Everything was given to you by the Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. Even because uh, scriptures talk about second edges, how uh, people receive benefits from the Lord, benefits from the Lord, even though they haven't known Him. Right? Even people in the world receive benefits from Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. All right, because of that pride, though, they're about to be destroyed. But it, that's 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 the fault. One thing about you know humble and humility is oh, yeah, is, yeah. is that Yahweh Shai is that main example, man. We got. Be like as Yahweh Shai, man. Yahweh is doing major great things, man. Yep. All right, there's no account for Yahweh Shai being prideful, man. Why is that, you know, that's great even being, you know, being around, man? Because Yahweh Shai came in all humble and meekness, man. All right. Um, the brother said, uh, why is that spirit even around? That's Satan. Yeah. How you know, you know, what's from on the Most High and what's from not of the Most High? You know, the brother he said earlier, Jacob is like unto a worm, which shows you humility. Also, the Lord has uh, persified us unto a sheep, you know, and a sheep without his shepherd will pretty much go astray. They'll yeah, lead the themselves brother. to the slaughter. And then the brother also said earlier, roughly paraphrasing the scripture, he said, they'll be exalted in due time, you know. So, of course, you know, right now we're not where we want to be, you know. You know, of course, we want to be uh, humble and things of those sort. But, you know, we got that king uh, mentality. You know, we, we want to come into that lot. We want to rule and judge things. You know, we want to be the top. And that's going to come in due time, man. Yep, yep, yep. It's going to come in order, not when we want it or how we want to do it. Oh, you, you can bring it out. Let's go to the back of your, back of your point. This is Sirach 51 and 30. Work your work B times. And that word B times to mean always. Right. Work your work B times, and in his time, he will give you your reward. Right? This, we, this is in our time, man. A, this, this is the Lord's show. So he's the director. So when, whenever he calls, whenever he decides to give us our reward, that's on him, man. We just got to continue doing the work. Uh, it wouldn't make no sense for a servant of the Lord to have dominion here because it doesn't go hand in hand with the uh, with what society you know deems as successful or rulership. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I, I was bringing, uh, bringing this up. This is Malachi chapter three. Malachi chapter three verse eighteen. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth the Most High and him that serveth him not. You see, a lot of times. We're going to be able to discern who serves the Heavenly Father and who does not uh, serve the Heavenly Father by what? By their actions, man. The brother just said, why is the, the spirit of, uh, 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 of pridefulness, the spirit of, 
uh, you know, men being unfruitful even on the earth because that's Satan, isn't it? Isn't it written in Luke the twenty-second chapter and the thirty-first verse how Satan has desired to have us? You know that he may sift us as wheat, and the spirit, the brother just, yep, the brother just made a lesson earlier today on how right. not letting your mind or letting the spiritual demon Satan play my tricks on you, man. You know to make you alter the perception of reality, man. You know, brothers, we already have the victory, man. We have to just endure to the end. All we have to do is to continue in the things which we have been given, and we're going to attain the victory, man. Right. But like the brother says, saying, what does he do? He plays it, He plays my tricks in your mind. Oh, the bro, I, I need to do my own thing. Oh, the, the pop say, uh, I can't have social media. Oh, I got to cut my hair. That's all Satan, man. You got to look at the, the, the end goal, man. The bigger picture, the bigger picture, the bigger picture. That's right, y'all boys on point. I got a pre. Go ahead, brother. Oh, okay, This is uh Zechariah 9 and 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. You guys see yourself? Where are you guys from? The no she just read it. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. And that's talking about our Lord Yahweh Shai. He said he came lowly, riding upon an ass, which an ass is a donkey. Okay? The ass is colt. It's a donkey, man. So a donkey is, is a lowly animal. It's also a, 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 a beast of burden, meaning it puts in work, man. That's why the tribe of Issachar, so-called Mexicans, is known as a, a, a strong ass. Okay, from couching down between two burdens, which those two burdens represent the landmass of North America and Central America. Okay, which you know some brothers say South America too, but North America, Central America. Okay, those two landmasses where the uh, uh, land of Mexico is, man. Okay, so Iskar's a strong ass, meaning he's a workhorse. But nonetheless, the point being what Yahweh Shah, when he came into Jerusalem, he fulfilled that prophecy in the New Testament when they were saying Hosanna, Hosanna, you know, save us now, right? Say he came in on an on ass's coat, man. And that goes back to Genesis 49 about the tribe of Judah. Yeah. Okay? Genesis 49. Let's see if I can find that real quick. Yeah. Genesis 49, starting at, uh, I'll just read verse 8, right of Genesis 49 to 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall put praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. The tribe of Judah is the so-called Negroes, man. Okay? And it says, it says, Thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise, because the tribe of Judah is the head tribe of all the tribes of Israel. Okay? Also, he was the head tribe of the southern kingdom. Okay? The kingdom of Judah. It says, Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies, meaning how Judah is going to get vengeance on Esau and Edom, man. Okay? But even when you look at the tribe of Judah, they have that type of spirit, man. You know, where they ready to uh, whoop a motherfucking ass, man. That's Judah for you, man. Okay, and it says, Thy father's children shall bow down before thee, because Judah's the head tribe. It says, Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. So the tribe of Judah, their they're, uh, they're, um, tribal mascot, for lack of a better word, is, is a lion, man. Okay, and it says, Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. Meaning, the tribe of Judah, and all the tribes too, but uh, specifically talking about Judah, they got docile and they forgot who their true enemies were. You know, they started to become coons and accept Esau. All right. But back in the ancient world, Judah was giving Esau hell, man. King David, King Solomon. We had the heathen in subjection, man. Okay. And it says Judah is a lion's whelp, man. You know, when you uh, look into a lion, uh, uh, like Brother Mayaka always said, what did you say about a lion's roar, brother? Oh, a lion, uh, when, a, when a lion is hungry, his roar could be heard five miles, uh, five miles away. Five miles away, bro. That's far as fuck. Yep. Imagine you hear somebody scream from miles away. Yep. Hey, you said Yahweh Shai's voice was as the voice of many waters. Yep. Yahweh Shai was yep. of the tribe of Judah. Yep. That's another reason why thy father's children shall bow down unto thee. The scriptures say every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Yahweh Shai, King David, they're of the tribe of Judah. And Judah, all Jake, you know, Jake talk loud, but Judah, especially, Judah talks really loud, man. And when you go into a, 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 the anatomy of a lion, their vocal cords is called, uh, I think, like uh, Jacob's son, if I'm not mistaken. I think their vocal cords is called like Jacob's son, something. Son of Jacob, Jacob's son, man. That's spiritual, you know? 
And the lion is also a symbol of the nation of Israel too. Okay, overall. But Judah is known as the lion, right? And it says, it says he stooped down, he counts as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up, man? And Yahweh Bashem is going to rouse up the tribe of Judah, all right, and all the rest of the tribes to, to you know, set it off in this nation against Esau, Edom, man. There will be a uh, civil unrest in the society, man. There will be race riots, and Esau knows that. That's why the KKK they're preparing for days like that, man. Okay, and Judah is going to be the one to set it off, man, through the spirit. You know, you got it, brother. Yeah. Oh, I, I got a few back to go. I was gonna say, uh, oh, go ahead. You got you scripture. Go I was gonna just make a point. You were talking about Judah being an outside um, con. You know, the Lord has snippets in these events where He reminds you who the hell his enemies are. You know, you know with those George Floyd, you know, situations, Mike right. Brown. You know, multiple. You know, Jakes has get cut down in this life. As soon as those things happen, you know, Judah rem remember. You know, but a couple weeks go by, then they forget. You know, but it's gonna it's gonna be some events. Or it's gonna be some um. Some situations the Lord uh puts in place where it ain't gonna be no turning back, man. Judas is gonna be looking for heads, and guess what? Everyone else is gonna fall in line like a domino effect, man. Right. right. And won't be no more coming back, man. Right. Yep. I had a quick one uh back you up, brother. This is Zechariah chapter 12, verse 7. And it says, The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. Yep. And this is exactly what we see, you know, through you know, uh Abu Bibbins. You know, coming back and restoring the tents of Judah, meaning that this truth, this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, this mission, this ministry, you know, would be uh, raised back up with Judah starting first. All right, and it says the glory, it's like that that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. You know, and it says, and in that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David. And the house of David shall be as the most high and as the angel of the Lord before them. You know, so starting with, you know, starting with Judas, Lachia, it says he that is feeble among them in that day shall be as David. So the Lord is going to put it, the spirit, you know, that also lines up with Isaiah the 59 chapter, how the Lord is going to create up a standard, you know. That standard is going to be uh, uh, risen against who? Esau, Edom. You know, starting with Judah. So like the brother said, how in the ancient times, a hey, Judah was giving Esau hell. So it's going to be just like that again, man. You know, when the Lord sets, sets up that standard, it's going to be starting with Judah. I got a quick read. Oh, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Uh, this Acts chapter, just a quick, quick research back throws up. This Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It says, and ye shall receive power after that, though, to recall the gods. I verbatim to the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, to come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in, in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria unto the uttermost part of earth. And we, we understand, you know, we we you know we got you know a uh, portion of that um, for carbon dust right now, but we preach it all the two, but in, in due time the Lord might increase that, man. Are right, you gonna have um coming men of Lord, you know, doing um social um miracles, you know, mighty works. All right, especially when Esau come, you know, with that blood, man. All right, many men, you know, we believe through the spirit, we have um, spiritual power, man. All right, all right, that's standard. Man, yesterday, man, uh, if I had my phone, I'll show you. I seen a video of AI super training. This AI robot literally was programmed not to shoot the creator, the person that he was training with. He would step in front of the target, he would not shoot. He stepped away, he hit it. And it was literally indestructible. You know, nothing is indestructible but concerning to what's going to happen. When Esau even comes down with that great wrath, the Lord is going to have to create up a standard against these devices, man. Yep. You yep. know, I even mean, on a lower level slot, even on a lower level, a lot of Teslas, they're known for their safety. They're known to, like, have accident avoidance. But they hit a lot of so-called black people, right? Mm. It, it, it's like they're trained to do that. A lot of black, so-called black people. They get hit by Teslas, man. It's up. like the cameras don't detect them. It's like they're warming them up for yep. shovel to shovel the program. Like, that's just playing a back door for now. And then when it's that time, we're just going to activate it. You know, look for millionaire people with beards. You know, and also, you know, it's a murder. And Brandon Lamar, Brandon Lamar from DMS Miami, he likes to speak on this topic a lot. You know, what? You, why do you think that Esau made these so-called, um, they're not even so-called, made these killer robots, man? You know, that's, that's ultimately for Jake, man. They, they didn't make these, you know, robots just to, you know, walk them on the street. Well, I don't break you, they're going to let these shits out, man. 
That's right. The same way they didn't make these centurions, these modern day policemen, you know, the same way they didn't uh, create that task force for uh, Esau, really? them. they created for us, man. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's the spirit. Man. Police really started after the uh, slavery oh, was so called, yeah, yeah, yeah. the slaves were let go. They needed somebody. I, I, the original police were slave catchers, man. It's all created for Jake. Second. Okay, God, I'm gonna go back to this Zechariah nine and uh, verse thirteen. This is backing up what the brother Yashikar said earlier. Because once the Lord rouses up Judah, all the tribes are gonna follow suit. Come, Zechariah nine and twelve. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. That's right. That stronghold is the heavenly Father. So we gotta turn back unto Him, especially in these latter times, because what's gonna happen? Lock it, brother. You can keep going. God, verse 13. When I have bent Judah for me, filled the bow with Ephraim, and raised up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece, and made thee as a sword of a mighty man. So Judah is going to be the bow. Ephraim is going to be the arrow, man. Okay? Judah's going to be that driving force to make the rest of the tribes follow suit and, and, and fight against Esau, man. And when you let off a bow, a bow and arrow, that's that's just a, for, that's a force of thrust. Yep. And this is uh, Isaiah. 19 and 17, and the land of Judah shall be a terror unto Egypt. Everyone that maketh mention thereof shall be afraid in himself because of the counsel of the Lord of hosts, which he hath determined against it. So the land of Judah shall be a terror unto Egypt. Egypt representing America, man. So it's really talking about the people of Judah, okay? It's going to make Esau afraid. It's going to be a terror unto Egypt. And like the brother said, you've seen a, uh, you've seen a portion of that with the Rodney King riots, the George Floyd riots. You're going to see something on a grander scale coming in these times now, man. So I'm going to go back to Genesis 49 and 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. So those lines of kings, all right, that uh, was always with Judah until Yahweh Shai is coming on the scene, then he's going to be pretty much that last king to sit on the throne of David. You know what I mean? Because he's going to be Solomon. You know, Solomon's king is going to reign for forever, man. And, and when you read Matthew, the first chapter, it goes into the lineage of those different kings. You know, lead it up to Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, now it says, so Shiloh represents Yahweh Shai. It says, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be, because the, all the tribes split at one point. <coughs> In particular, the southern kingdom, northern kingdom split. But through Yahweh Shai, they're being brought back together, man. He said he's going to make them of one fold, man. Okay, verse 11, binding his fold unto the vine, and his ass is called unto the choice vine. Going back to what we read earlier in the book of Zechariah. All right. That, that king cometh on the ass lowly. All right. He says, he washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood yeah. of grapes. That's what's a good precept for that. Isaiah 63. You know, Jeremiah uh, 25, where it talks about the Lord is going to tread the grapes, man. Okay. And it says, uh, his eyes shall be red with wine. Because our Lord, Yahweh shot when he came on the scene, he drank wine. And his teeth white with milk. Okay, so that's the point right there, man. And in the book of Proverbs, it says, Who hath redness of eye, they that tarry long at the wine. So when you drink wine, red wine, it makes your eyes get red, man. You know? All right, that's a stain. What's that? You guys going into heavy juices? Uh, um, kind, but, uh, when I you think so. Kind. Yeah, when you strain it or something like that, I believe it was you. If I'm not, Salaki. If I'm mistaken, Salaki. But kind of, yeah, when you got heavy juices like wine, you know, if you don't mix them up and stir them, yep, you yep. know, the, 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 the mass of it goes to the bottom. Yep, the leaves. Kind, you know, so that those things, like, even when you touch wine, it can stain your fingers. Nah, so it can stain your, uh, your, your, your internal part, too. Like, uh, real juices that you have, usually they say for you to shake them. Not, not a thing about shake you. Well. No, that was me, brother. It was you. It was your hot about your side. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, that's why real juice is saying shake them. Uh, hey, that ain't shake well before you. Yeah. Calm. Yep. Yeah. Hey. Listen. Yep, calm. Yeah. And you know what? Let me bring that priest about because. That's right. Hey, can't trust every shallow wall. Nah, Hey, if you come with peace, we don't shallow wall, man. Hey, this is uh, Zephaniah 1 and 12. It says, It shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles. And punish them that are settled on their leaves. They that it says that say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. So what it means settled on your leaves, all right? Because you know, a couple weeks back we went into this. The word leaves in the Hebrew is uh shamarah, all right? And it means leaves of wine, the dregs of wine. So if if, if you let wine sit, the leaves will sink to the bottom. That's basically like dudes who are comfortable in the society, they're like leaves in, in, in a drink, man. They're, they're comfortable, they're they're settled, man. You know, they're not stirred up. 
no substance. Vanity. Yep. Nothing else. And that's why judgment is going to begin where? It's going to begin in the ancient of men. Yep. You know, those that know that they are his wives. As it is written, first, uh, first Peter the fourth chapter says judgment must begin at the house of Israel. Because when you look at it, our people are the ones that's committing outside from Esau, but they're the ones that's committing most wickedness, man. Jeremiah the fifth chapter says how our people have surpassed the deeds of the wicked, man. You know, so that's why the judgment has to begin at the house of Israel, man. Those that know that they're Israelites, first and foremost, man. That's right, that's right. Y'all probably want to go back to Isaiah 13? Uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 13, who is that? Verse 7, 8? Uh, verse 8. Uh, you brought, you want to keep reading it? Or you want to keep reading Isaiah 13? Yeah, who is that? Verse 8. Like back is Isaiah chapter 13, verse 8. It says, they shall be afraid, pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as women that travail it. They shall be amazed one at another. Their, their faces shall be as flames. Literally, man. You know, their faces shall be as flames. You know, it says they shall be made, they shall be amazed at one another. The brother just read it earlier, uh, the wisdom of Solomon in the fifth chapter. The strangeness of his salvation, how they're gonna be amazed, man. Uh, keep reading, brother. Uh -huh. Oh, the day of the Lord will come in cruel, but with wrath and with their anger to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the cities thereof out of it. That's right. What is that line up with the, uh, uh, the book of Amos, where it says, All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, man. So the heavenly father is gonna do that. He's gonna destroy the he's gonna destroy the sinners out of it, man. And what is sin? The uh, the transgression of the law, man. Those that are in um, cahoots with the water, brother. Beautiful word. Are in cahoots of this society, man. Can you read it, brother? Or oh, what have you? Go ahead, brother. Bring it up. This is the book of Romans, and I'm gonna read it in uh, the NLT. I'm going to read KJV first, then the NLT. Ooh. Romans chapter 1, the brother said, people that are in cahoots with society, people that are cool with the wickedness, are going to fall by the sword too. All right, Romans, I'm going to go straight to the point. Romans 1 and 32 in KJV. Would you like me to read it? I'm going to read it in KJV. I'll read it KJV. Romans chapter 1, verse 32, and it reads, Who, knowing the judgment of the Most High, that they which commit such things, are worthy of death. Not only do they do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Um, that's going into the, you know, those, those modes in society and people are that commit such vile acts. They are worthy of the judgment of the Lord. And not only them, but people that are cool with them that do it too. Romans 1 and 32 and the NLT, they know God's justice requires that those who deserve, who do these things deserve to die. Yet they do them anyway. Worse yet, they encourage others to do them too. Right. If you're cool with the way society is right now, if you're cool with the, how wicked this place is, hey, you, you deserve the judgment of the Lord just as much as the people that are, are committing it too. A lot of scripture says, cry aloud and spare not to show the people the transgressions and how they're going off when uh, how they're going off according to the Lord, man. That's right. Hey, didn't uh, isn't it written how the heavenly father only saved just Lot? Because he was vexed with the filthy conversation done in the midst thereof, man. So it's just to show you how you have to be separate. That's what holy means. It means to be separate, sloppy brother. Forgive me. You got to be separate from the uh, the manner, the conversation, what's going on in society, man. You know, like how it's written in the book of uh, Exodus, you know, it says to follow not a multitude to do evil. In these times, what we see, we see men being with other men. We see women being with other women. All right. We're seeing our people follow the ways of the heathen. That's all wrong, according to the Heavenly Father. So we can't follow the ways of this world, man. You know, doesn't it say that the, uh, the fashions of this world are going to pass away, man? You know? That's right. It tells you that wrong in the first chapter. You know, women all working that. Men on men working that much more seemingly. There are women did change the natural use of women. And what's the part of the natural use of a woman? Reproducing babies, man. Having sex. All right? This is part of the reason why a woman was created, to have sex with a man and, re and repopulate, you know? 
But you got a lot of these women who be like, my body, my choice. I'm tired of sharing my body. And I, and I get it for a lot of you women, you know, having a child could be somewhat of a burden. You know, you got a, a, a baby, you know, feeding on you all damn day. I get it, it might be burdensome, but that's because you under the curses. In the kingdom is going to be a beautiful thing, having children, nursing children. But going back to Genesis, the third chapter says, in thy sorrow, thou shalt have conception. I'm paraphrasing that. You know, so women are under the curse of birth pains, labor pains, because of what happened back in the garden, man. Man, imagine how beautiful that would be to be able to have a child in the kingdom without having no pain. Yo, that's going to happen, though. It says all, 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 uh, what is that, Revelation? Tell us how, you know, that our body is not our own, but it's been purchased, man. See what I'm saying? So you're supposed to glorify the most high in your body, man, which is your temple. So, so you say our bodies, and the scripture also speaks about how our souls were lent unto us, man. Ooh, let me get that. I think that's in Wisdom of Solomon. Also, isn't that uh, uh, Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter? I think Cyrus Sever also says that uh, if you have a daughter, give her to a man of understanding. So you really don't have a choice. You really, if women really, your body isn't yours. It belongs to your husband and your child. The has, end of the day. has thou daughters have a care to their body? Yep, yep, yep. So you're not supposed to be letting your daughter walk out the house dressed half naked. Yep. All right. And see, as a as a husband, you now take on the place of the father. Yep. So now you're not supposed to let your wife walk out the house butt ass naked, man. That's yep. off, man. All right. If you got a daughter, don't let your daughter walk out with her titties all out, ass all out, man. Showing no respect for herself, man. Yep. That's off, man. That's right, because the Heavenly Father set up what? Princes and kings and princesses, man. And that word princess goes back to being modest. Mm. You know, and a lot of these women lack that attribute of being modest. They want to be seen because they have drunk the Babylon juice, man. man. The wine of this world. Man, that's how you set up on this side, man. They, they attention whores, man. Right? right. They, they get drunk off of attention, man. Right, that's why he like to get all dressed up, had a ass out, go out downtown and curb every man out there just because they want to get attention. Man. Right, that's that's how they set up, man. Social media, perfect prime example. A bitch don't get enough likes, she gonna delete the picture and repost it again. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's, a, it's another sign. Social media is a perfect sign that we're in the last days, man. <laughs> hey, what? Well, there was uh, some ease, more than one. They said they'd rather get social media than have a boyfriend, man. Yep, yep. It's because of that validation, man. See, this is a pr prime example, man. Prime, prime example. Prime prime spirit, man. All right, women walking out here with their ass all out and shit, man. That's off as hell, man. Leaving man with no <laughs> imagination, man. Yeah, that's right. Uh, she got to cover up. You no become, you become desensitized, man. Huh? And then Eve want to wonder why you're not all aroused that her being in lingerie. Yep, yep, yep. Bitch. Instagram and see that shit. Hey, another thing too, they be wondering why they be getting ravaged, why they get raped. There was this Eve on, on Twitter, man. She was around these yeah. celebrity oh, like I that that constant that. She was like, man, the nigga that she got raped at a party. No, no, no. It wasn't him. It was like it was like some some YouTube streamer nigga. And she got raped at one of his parties, and the nigga that raped it looked like a vulture, just plain and simple. That looked like a vulture. But um but when I, I look at her page, man, you look at her profile, at her profile. she just she just butt ass naked on that thing. What she expect to happen? Yo, and I was reading the comments under that. And there was a lot of dudes saying, yo, if she was in my bed looking like that, she would have got taken too. Yo, why would you put yourself in that situation, man? Yeah. Yeah. Man, y'all should call us out. 
So Rock chapter 26, I'm going to start at verse 8. A drunken woman and a gather of rod caused a great anger and she would not cover her own shame. It says, the word of a woman may be, may be known in her haughty lips and eyes. All right? That's what the Lord, you know, everything with the Lord is in part, man. You know, he was away a woman for the dress, man. I'm not, I'm not, we're not surprised when certain shit like that happens, man. Look, look, how, the, look how you're dressing, man. Mm -hmm. You know, especially with the time you cut dress like that, see what the fuck happens to you. The only reason women are able to dress like that because they have 911 and easily accessible. Wait till that goes away. Wait till all this all hell breaks loose. Women will not dare walk out the house with a two piece on. Man, don't be don't be a wreck for them, man. They be out here like food and niggas is hungry. They gonna be scared. <laughs> See, women already know innately, you know, not to go outside late. Not to come out, yep, yep, come outside yep. too early. Gas station. Gas, that's the I was just about to say, yep. one time, the brother Yaku and I, we was at a gas station. And it was like, it wasn't that late, but it was nighttime. And this E, she pulled up to the gas station. She pumped her shit. She looking around. She ran inside, hmm. came right back out, got her gas and left, man. man. She was not trying to get caught. And see, that, that's the thing, because women understand they're prey. They're prey. Men are like beasts. Mm -hmm. So when you're out here showing up your titties, showing up your ass, that's like, Dangling a, 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 a lamb in front of a hungry lion, man. And why, right. why wouldn't you feel safe at a gas station? There's, there's, there's people inside. There's cameras everywhere. Well why lit up. Feel safe? Well lit up. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you feel safe? Because you know, they know. That, that threat is there. Mm -hmm. and that's why in Isaiah, that's why another reason why Isaiah 4 and 1 is going to come to play. Because yeah. you know, a lot of these women are not going to be able to trust the Esau on that day. Can you go say something? No, no. Oh, okay, Kyle, Kyle, Kyle. Uh, You're going to see that Jacob's trouble. Imagine, you know, men, man. A man don't get boxed a couple weeks, a couple months. Jacob's trouble. You see an Eve out there. What's going to happen? Eve by herself with no man. She going to get ravaged, man. So that's just back here with that Isaiah 4. One, they're going to be cleaving to men, especially men of the Lord. Men of the Lord are going to be the only men in society. Everybody else is going to be two beats. Where you at? I mean, I'm at, oh, I ain't going to lie, I'm at 10. Wait, that's, you, you, you still on Isaiah 13? Yeah. Yeah, read that thing, man. I see you on the back. <laughs> The sun and the moon shall be darkened with the stars and withdraw their shining. That's right. because, you know, that aftermath of these nukes, once they go up in the atmosphere, then it's going to block a lot of the uh, x ray, I mean, not the x ray, the uh, UV rays and things of those sorts. That's going to be so heavily concentrated. It says, And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the heresy of the proud and the seas and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible man. same thing as he's done to Esau in this Egypt, just like how you did in ancient Egypt. You know, raise up Pharaoh, raise up Pharaoh to what? Further magnify his name. That's right. What were we on? Uh, Isaiah 13, right? Yeah. Right. Back okay. to Isaiah 13, verse 12. I'll make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the whole west of, of Ophir. All right, going back to what we speak about Isaiah 41. All right, this is not talking about a regular man, man. This talk, is talking about ultimately the men of the Lord, man. All right, well, I'm ready to these women going to be running to these men, man, for protection. All right, for that, for the for, you know, to be all uh, at a good, and, you know, and have some type of safety, man. Because you're going know, to have men, all men, you know, or your men going all over the place, people killing each other. 
know, but we, us men alert that we believe in the spirit, you know, we're going to have protection those times, man. Yep. So what's going to make a man precious is the scarcity. Yep. Every man you run into in, the, in that day, Jacob Trouble, is going to be this group beast of like mind state. You're not going to be a man. You're not going to be a, a man at the end of the day, right? So when, when, it, when a woman runs into a, a man or a lord in that day, he's going to be more valuable than the finest budget of gold or opium, man. You got it, huh? Uh, it's Isaiah 32 and uh, 2. And a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind and a comfort from the tempted tempest, as the rivers of water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. So a man is going to be as a hiding place, man, a place of safety, a man of the Lord, man. Okay? Hey, and if I may add to something that uh, Brother Michael Godless said, you know, they're going to be like a brute beast out here, man. And, you know, the being civil is going to be pretty much extinct man right the only people that's going to be you know quote unquote civil is going to be the men of the lord because in the times of Jacob trouble everybody else out here is going to just be going off of instinct living off of you know however they want to live not following the land of the, the, not following the law of the land nor the scripture so they're going to be doing whatever they want out here to survive but the men are going to be following the laws of the scriptures man so we're going to have a type of order to us we're going to have a type of of uh, of being civil to us, man. Right? We're not gonna be out here like brute beasts, man. All right. And I believe uh, if, if that's not in Sirach chapter two, um, it says make not make not hay for any type of trouble, man. That's wisdom, knowledge. You know what Isaiah three three and six were saying. It says wisdom and knowledge shall be that ability at that time, man. That's 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 gonna be the forefront of our mind, man. You gonna see men and lords about all about all about all about all about all about all they can be in the right mindset, even walking amongst, walking amongst the uh, place, man. People running around, you got certain men walking like nothing's even happening, man. Nothing's getting touched, man. Now, you're going to see men who are be well fed, okay? But you're going to see people around them, and they, they ask, I mean, I say, they stuff is going to touch their back, man. All right? But, you know, you're going to be a good cause, man. Because uh, the elect, uh, no man can be plucked out of his hand, out of the Lord's hand. Uh, that's what the elect is going to be uh, pretty much resting under the Lord, behind the Lord. And what did the Lord, the Lord do for Noah? He saved his entire household, you know, his sons and their wives. So the Lord, you know, Lord, wouldn't he have mercy on those that we love and who are upon our house, or who are uh, within our house? The same thing will be done. Quick for each second. Ezra 2 and 27. Be not weary, for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou shalt be merry and have abundance. See, so everybody else, they're going to be in shambles, but the elect going to be merry and have abundance, man. No, but that's the point. We can jump out of Isaiah. Let's go to Ezra chapter nine, verse seven. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed, shall be preserved from the said pearls. So that goes back to that stability. You know, that wisdom and knowledge being our stability is going to keep us preserved from the perils, man. What's a peril? You know, trouble. trouble. Uh, 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 famine, famine of the bread. We're gonna be preserved from that. What about Job? Is that Job the fifth chapter? It says, "At famine, uh, you shall laugh." Perfectly yeah. paraphrasing. You know what state of mind you have to be to laugh when there's a famine going on, man. You go. Hey, that's just to show you that lines up with Isaiah the sixty fifth chapter, man. How the heavenly Father is gonna allow His servants to eat while the rest of the world is hungry. I got that, Job. Job chapter 5, starting at verse 19. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven, there shall no evil touch thee. So those six troubles represent the six trumpets, man. Okay, the seventh trouble is the seventh trumpet, which is the completion of the Lord's judgment, which is those nuclear missiles, like it says on the side. All right, and it says, In famine he shall redeem thee from death, and in war from the power of the sword. So there's going to be a famine out here, man. And the Lord's going to redeem his elect from that, man. It says, Hey, you guys, you guys see anything interesting on them signs? Any questions? Any questions? Okay. All right. No problem. Verse 21. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. So the Lord's elect not going to be afraid of the destruction that's getting ready to come. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh, neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee, man. So, hey, even in these times now, the wild beast is going to be on the loose, man. Just like in the movie I Am Legend, you had the, 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 the pack of lions. 
they 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 took that deer that Will Smith was trying to hunt. That's what's gonna be like in America in these times, man. Wild animals gonna be on the on the loose, but the elect are gonna be at league with the beast of the field. Yeah, ain't gonna be seeing creatures that Esau got stored up in the lab. They just been trying to mate, splitting genes and all types of shit. We're gonna be seeing creatures that you know the Lord created that we ain't even get to see yet. You know, the perfect example, Leviathan coming out. Right, right, spirits created for vengeance. Right, it's gonna be man, like the scripture says, man, a time that has never been seen before, man. Yeah, the scripture speaks about unknown beasts, newly created. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wisdom of Solomon 11. But, uh, brother, that pre, if not, we go back to Isaiah. Back in Isaiah chapter 13, verse 13, therefore, I make. To this land so hey they're going to see the destruct they're going to a hey, foresee the destruction they're going to see that it's real and like the scriptures say all these other different nations are going to try to go back to their own land man. and no time keep going brother keep going. everyone that is proud i'm just like everyone that is bound shall be thrust through and eat, and everyone that is going unto them shall fall by the sword that's right all the other uh, heathen nations even Esau, Edom trying to fight it, uh, fight against it. How was y'all? What does it say in Luke, uh, the 17th chapter or 19th chapter? You know, um, let me try to get that. But it says, uh, you got it, brother. Uh, that's what it is. Is that, is that what you want? Where it says, uh, oh, 19 27. Yep. You know what, what I'm talking about. Luke 19 right? and 27. But those, my enemies, which were not, I would block you. Luke 19 27. But those, my enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. That's right. The water brother was grabbing that precept yeah. so just to show you that when Yahweh Shah makes his great return, both his foundation and his, you know, his set is already is already gonna be in motion. You know, there ain't gonna be no altars, there ain't gonna be no 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 second thoughts. Whatever the Lord has planned set to do is gonna come to pass, man. It does say the scripture. Um, keep going, brother. You got it. Uh, going back to what we were going into earlier. Uh, Quick point, just because uh, those those silos, in, in, like the brother said, they're not meant for. Uh, we're not always used. They're not meant for pretty much to look uh, at and lollygag yeah. upon. What are those called? You know? Yeah, they're not made for show. They're made for destruction. When, uh, once a nuke leaves a silo, there's no there's no special way that it can return. It can't just land back into it safely. That has to go destroyed. Same thing when it butter leaves the barrel. Anything that's in its way, whether it be a box of crayons, bones, blood, or flesh, it will be destroyed in here. Right. It like like you said, a bullet or the, the missile, they don't go and do like this. Uh, it goes to that destination, like if you point a gun. Uh, you won't point, brother. You got it, little uh, brother. It says everyone that it's like verse 16, their children also shall be dead before their eyes. Babylon the Great and uh, these other different countries, starting with the Medes, man. Now, 
these needs are not concerned with the goal. These needs are not concerned on negotiating. Their main goal is to what? Have this place destroyed. And, um, I believe it's Revelation the eighth chapter that goes into this as well, man. How when these missiles when these missiles are released, it's gonna be in stages. You know, uh, this is Revelation chapter eight. All right, Revelation chapter eight, verse thirteen. And it reads, and I beheld and heard an angel fly through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, 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 to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpets of the three angels, which are yet to sound. So we know that these missiles are going to hit what in stages, man, you know? So you might have <laughs> uh, talks within the, uh, the discussion between Esau and uh, Mami Slaka with Babylon in Russia, and then next thing you know, they might say, fuck it, and let all the missiles come, man. You know? That's why it says, and the three are yet to sound, man. Oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I want to bring out this picture right here. This is uh, Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 1. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, as the rivers of water, he turns and with it whoever he will. So, you know what further learned that up? That's in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah the ninth chapter. Uh, or Jeremiah the twenty-fifth chapter, Salakia. Jeremiah chapter twenty-five, verse nine, and it reads, Behold, I will send and take all the families of the north said the Lord and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. So it's just to show you that the heavenly father has the hearts of the king. Doesn't it say, as it, isn't it written that the, the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord? So it's just to show you that the actions or the things that these presidents, kings, whatever they do, they are instructed from the heavenly father. How do we line that up? Let's go to Proverbs, the ninth chapter. Proverbs chapter nine, verse 17. Oh, uh, is that Proverbs? I get it for you, right? No, that's not it. There's one inside, right? How the, uh, which one, brother? The, but, uh, the, the, uh, basically, the, how the Lord's going to set up somebody over the earth in due time, one that's profitable. Oh, yeah, come on, Sirach, the 10th chapter. Yep. You know? And that one that's profitable is Yahweh Shah. Yep. You know? Because he saw Edom, we see how he has maintain this earth man and when you look beside you you have a tree that's been that's been planted on concrete man how do you allow that tree to grow you know how about the sky when you look in the sky there's chemtrails spray everywhere man and guess what we have to breathe in them chemtrails what about our food it's prophesied in the book of ezekiel how our food will be defiled man you know, that's all he saw eat him. You got Bill Gates talking about eating synthetic meat, man. Wasn't it like 3D printed type meat? 3D printed? Man, this is good. Just a quick side note. With a 3D printer, you can literally make anything. You can make a, a, a gun with a 3D printer. So if you can make a gun with a 3D printer, you can make food with it too. Go ahead, bro. Uh, also, um, they were talking about making organs from one, with 3D printers too, like people that needed kidney transplants. They're talking about uh, printing uh, printer. I mean, printing kidneys with a 3D printer. But I, I got a quick pre. Yeah, this is Hosea nine and three. They shall not dwell. They shall not dwell in the Lord's land, but Ephraim shall return to Egypt, and they shall eat unclean things in Assyria. And Assyria being the modern day uh, America. So uh, no, go ahead, not, So uh, Assyria being a modern day America. This is the land that we're eating unclean things. Right, and there was a study that went out that they, they tested the ice on the top of a high ass mountain, like 5,000 feet in the air, and they found aluminum in it. And where's that from? The chemtrail. The chemtrail, spring, chemtrail yeah. man. So, that one that is profitable is speaking about you, how we shot our Lord, man. Because Esau Edom is not fit to rule, man. You know? And it's, uh, I was just going to, uh, on a side note, just say, uh, it says in the book, if the Lord didn't say the place, pretty much, this place would be pretty much extinct. Like he saw Edom, he, he, he killed his own self. Yeah. Except so they were short of the guard. Let's be safe. Oh, you got one, brother? Yeah.
Revelation chapter 21, verse 1, it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Right. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there is no more sea. All right, that's going to the, that new ruler system, huh? All right, that new ruler system started on the outside. It says, And I and I saw, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the coming down from most high out of heaven, prepared as a bride and born for the husband, man. That you took, remember, you know, Jerusalem is a people who were placed, man. Right. All right, and that's what you talk, talk about the elect, man. And that as a bride and born for a husband, talk about the outside. All right. Man, it's beautiful that you brought that out because when John the Revelator was on the when John the Revelator was on the island of Patmos, and as he was, was receiving these visions, like you just read out, he said he saw a new Jerusalem, you know that holy city. So well, that's a Jake, but <laughs> but just imagine that was thousands of years ago when John received those visions. How much more now, man? You know, like again, the victory, we already got the victory. We just gotta keep fighting, man. Fighting to the truth until death and the striving to the truth until death and the Lord shall fight for you, man. I'll take I'll take that. Go back to Isaiah 13. Yep. Back in Isaiah chapter 13. Um uh, verse, verse 17. Yeah, verse 17. It says, Behold, I will start up the knees against them who shall not regard silver as for like an ant. as for gold, as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bowls also shall dash the young man to pieces. They shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. And that's what I was talking about earlier to the spirit. I was going to mention, as for silver and gold, they shall not delight in it, man. So these other niggas, like Russia in particular, you ain't going to be able to bribe them no more. You're not going to be able to pay them off. The Lord is going to put that demon on them, which really is a righteous spirit. But, no, the demon is being intelligent. Yeah, true. He gonna put that spirit on to hit the missiles, man. You know they gonna just gonna be ready to kill. Uh, That's why it says, "The eyes shall not pity the womb, man. The eyes shall not spare children, because they know there are babies in the society. They know there's little toddlers who go to preschool and shit like that. But they're not gonna think about it in that, that day. They're not gonna consider it. They just gonna boom, hit that button, fuck that shit. Yep. The place gotta go." And fuck them little kids any goddamn yep, yep, place. Yep, them yep. little kids wicked as hell, man. Yep, if you're not a, 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 a toddler or a child, a little one of the elect, fuck you. Right. Right. It'll be, be the same chits wearing uh, uh, LGBTQ clothing, celebrating Christmas, Halloween, and they're just little two-third niggas in training. Yep, yep. Yeah. That's all it is. It's just they even a kid. You see them on TikTok motherfuckers in training as a child. Damn. See what I'm yeah, saying? Fuck them kids. Yeah, so they try not regard gold nor silver, man. Only Pookie and Ray Ray, you know, give a fuck about death, women or children on the scene. Uh, shit. And not even anymore. Don't play it over with. So, you are spinning on everybody. Bring it out, huh? It says, in Babylon, in Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the child deeds, anxiously shall be as when it was high over to Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah, that's a lot of fire, man. Okay. Yeah, what happened with Sodom and Gomorrah? The Lord rained fire and brimstone. It says Babylon, the beauty of the Chaldees. Actually, those Chaldees goes into those witches and those warlocks during the time of Babylon. They got modern day witches and warlocks and druids now in these times, man. You know, this place is full of witchcraft. Yep. Oh, Hollywood goes back to Hollow's wood, man. Which is the wand they used to, the type of wood they used to use to make wands for witches and warlocks, man. Yep, yep. So Hollywood is full of witchcraft and sodomy, man. Jay Leto said it himself. If the Most High doesn't destroy Hollywood, he owes Sodom and Gomorrah an apology, man. What happened to Jay Leto's ass? His ass caught on fire. His ass caught on fire, man. You got it, bro. shall never be inhabited, neither shall it dwell in from generation to generation. Neither saw the Arabian pits tent there, neither saw the shepherds make their boat there. Right, because Babylon, after this place is over with, it's never going to rise again. They ne nobody's ever going to have it again. Got it. It's a lot of your brother. You read there, verse 19? Yeah, you read it. Yeah. It's a lot. You read it again? Got it. This is verse 19. Isaiah chapter 13. It says, In Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the child, these ex ecstasy shall be as when the most high one who saw them. Oh, and I just wanted to bring a quick side note. I'm going to go to Matthew the fourth chapter because it says, um, it says uh, Babylon, the glory of kingdom. Now, when Satan 
All right, took our Lord Yahushua upon that mountain, and he told him that. Matter of fact, let me just read it. Okay, read uh, Matthew 4, and just start at the top. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, and it reads, Then was Yahushua led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungry. And when he and when the tempter came to him, and he said, If thou be thou the son of the most high, command that these stones be made bread. And he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the most high. And Yahweh saw was uh, quoting what? Deuteronomy. All right, keep going, brother. Verse 5. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the son of the most high, cast thyself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Yahweh said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy power. Verse 8. Again, verse 8. Again, the devil taketh him and into exceeding high mountain and sheweth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. See, so again, Babylon, the glory of kingdom. So when and, uh, when the spiritual demon Satan was what tempting our Lord, you don't think Yahweh Shah saw the excellency of Babylon the Great? He in fact did. Babylon is one of the greatest kingdoms upon this planet Earth. That you know, according to secular history. So I just wanted to bring that out because, <clears throat> as it is written, this place Babylon the Great is going to be destroyed, and it says. Again, going back to Matthew, the fourth chapter, it says, When the devil took him up to an exceeding high mountain, he showed them all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Because you got certain people that don't think that when we say Babylon the Great, they don't believe it is America, man, which in fact it is. So, I wanted to bring that up. That's a good piece of YouTube. I'm on that. You go back to uh, Isaiah. Oh, what you got? No, no, we're going back. Okay. Isaiah chapter 13. Verse 21, it says, But the wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, their houses shall be full of local creatures, and the owls shall dwell there, and, and satires shall dance there. Yep. So, the, water. the Most High has created and engineered certain animals to withstand uh, the circumstances of desert like places, you know, that don't have, you know, fountains of water or uh, plentiness of shade or a lot of green. There are certain animals that just needs to bear little and can thrive, you know, the rest of their life. You know, you got meerkats, you got scorpions, you got vultures, you got owls and eagles. You got a lot of nasty animals that can pretty much thrive and, you know, survive those conditions. That's right, brother. Man. I, no, you got, I was just saying, man, that's that damn fun. I had a dream one time. It was like, I was going back to my neighborhood. It was like post Babylon destruction. Like that was just the vibe of the dream, but I knew I was in my neighborhood. But in real life, when, when Babylon's destroyed, you ain't gonna be able to see nothing in this place. But nonetheless, I pulled up to my driveway and there was a bunch of desert animals and creatures there. You know, it was like a Komodo dragon, an owl, all these different desert creatures. And when I was about to go walk up in the front door, the Komodo dragon like rushed me. Like, nah, you're not supposed to dwell here. And I woke up after that, man. So, hey, that's prophecy right there, man. It's what's gonna be like in this place, man. A rising and depart. You woke up and you party. Hey, God. Right. <laughs> we out of the midst of Babylon. We yeah, know that spiritually, but, you know. I got a quick break. Yeah. Zephaniah chapter 2, starting at verse 13. And he will stretch out his hand against the north and destroy Assyria and will make Nineveh a desolation and dry like a wilderness. And flock shall lie down in the midst of her, all the beasts of the nations, both the cormorant and the bitter shall lodge in the upper lintels of it their voice shall sing in the windows desolation shall be in the thresholds for he shall uncover the cedar work this is the rejoicing city that dwelt carelessly that said in her heart i am and there is none beside me how will she become a desolation a place for beasts to lie down in everyone that passes by her shall hiss and wag his head and that's talking about america babylon the great man that careless city you know Right, back Isaiah chapter thirty Isaiah chapter thirty-four verse fourteen. The wild beasts of the desert, the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island. And the, 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 the 
How you say Savior. satire? Satire, Satan. Oh, that's how you say it? Satire shall cry to his fellow, the screech owl also shall rest there and, and find for herself a place to rest. And, and, it's a lot of there shall the great owl make her nest and lay in hatch and gather under her shadow. There, sh there shall the vultures also be gathered, everyone with her mate. So that again, that's speaking about Babylon, how those desert creatures, those creatures that the heavenly father created to withstand the, the radiation and the ICBM nuclear missiles, how they're going to basically live in Babylon. That's going to be, it's basically like the heavenly father giving them their own land in that time, man. Yep, yep, yep. Go ahead, brother. You got it. Yeah, I'll go back to up. Revelation 18, starting out verse. Got it? No, that's the spirit though. Bring it out. Come on, Revelation 18 and 2. And he cried with the mighty strong, with, and he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, "Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird." Man, right. So America's going to be the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. That's that cormorant in the bitter. This is Baruch chapter four, starting at verse thirty-four. It says, "For I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude, and her pride." shall be turned into mourning, right. for fire shall come upon her from the everlasting, long to endure, and she shall be inhabited of devils for a great time. And those devils represent the different uh, spirits and island creatures that's going to dwell in America. In the deserts, you actually have spirits that dwell there, man. That's why you always try to say when an unclean spirit goes out of man, he see walking through dry places. Yep, yep, yep. There's people who have reported when they dwell in the desert that they've heard voices and shit. No one's around. That's them demons, man. Because you know? a satire is like your average everyday animal. Yep. That's like a Bacchus, ugly ass yep. demon. I'm going to it out. like a goat. Uh, you know? Man. You got more on that? Oh, uh, that's a point. Uh, I mean, the type of stuff you're doing, you encountering the, in, the, in the, like, the desert. That's why a lot of people be seeing, uh, what do you call it, the mirages. Yep. Right? They'll be there seeing the apparitions uh, of even people, people, the places in the desert. Right? They, 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 that's why you're know, really seeing those Philippines, man. Different spirits out there, man. That's why we're bugging out of the desert with that. Nah, but we got one more person in 13. Yeah. You got your finishers? Uh, I'll walk you one more. Nah. Alright, well, look, you have one? Huh? You have one? Oh, this is Joel 3 and verse 19. It says, Egypt shall be a desolation, Egypt shall be a desolate wilderness. For the body to give thy children, the children of Judah, because they have shed and blood in their land. So, you know, very much that this link of Edom and uh, Egypt, which is America together. So, we know that this is talking about Esau's rulership, and it's just the that Esau is the end of the world, so we know there ain't no time. Uh, I got a quick free to back up to your point about how the, the spirits, they'll flee. A spirit will uh, reside in the desert. All right, this is Tobit chapter 8, start from the top. And one day I suck. This is Tobit 8 and 1. And one day I suck, they brought Tobias in unto her. And as he went, he remembered the words of Raphael, which was the angel that journeyed with Tobias, and took the ashes of the perfumes and put the heart of the liver with the fish thereupon and made a smoke therewith. The witch, when the, when the evil spirit had smelled, he fled into the utmost parts of Egypt, and the angel bound him. Right, so the utmost parts of Egypt could be uh, like a, a d deserted area, and the angel bound his ass there, man. Right, yep, and that's a good point, brother. That goes to show you how fast them demons be traveling to. Them spirits, they, they yep. literally hop. The spirits hop, they run, you know what I'm saying? Angels be flying and shit. And that, like you said, he, he he bound him all the way to the end of Egypt, and he was in, uh, where was he at? Um, in the book of Tobit. He was like somewhere in, uh, I want to say, Iraq. He wasn't in. Yep, 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 yep. You know what I'm saying? So Equitain from Egypt is a few thousand miles away. So that's how you know the demons be traveling. But uh, go back but, and, and then again, if an angel could travel in the vehemency be him, be of the spirit, a demon could do it too. Right. Last verse of Isaiah chapter 13 is verse 22. It says, and the wild bees of the island of the islands shall cry in their desolate houses and dragons in their desolate palaces. And her time is near to come and her days shall not be prolonged. 
That's right, brother. Talk about America, man. Somebody uh, get Revelation. I'll get it. Matter of fact, I got you. Revelation, Re- Revelation ten and um, where it says it should not be long. Ten. Yeah, Revelation ten and verse six. But the Revelation chapter ten, verse six, and it reads, "And swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven." And the things that they're in, the earth, and the things that they're in are the sea, and the things which are there in that should be time no longer. That's right. So this place is coming to a close. The Lord about to pull apart a curtain called up Babylon. The fact that you see all these things go down with the sea one, you know what I'm saying? The 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 the, the, the famines, okay, the pestilence, you know what I'm saying? All these different plagues is showing that we are at the end, man. Okay. We know we're at the end because Esau Edom is in rulership. That's another reason why we know we're at the end. Because when you go into the prophecies, it was the Babylonian Empire, Media Persian, the Greeks, the Romans. Okay, and then who comes after that? Yahweh Shai, man. So Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that follows us, man. We at the end, man. This place over with. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 7. Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. That made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken her wine, therefore the nations are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her take ball for her? If so, if so, if so be made, if so be she may be healed, we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go, everyone in his own country. For the judgment reached unto heaven and it's lifted even up, it's like it, and it's lifted up even to the sky. So it's just to show you that, like it says, we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed, man. The judgment has reached up unto the heaven, man. Isn't that lined up unto Revelation, what, the 18th chapter as well, man? Right. It's perfectly lined up, man. So it's not going to be prolonged any longer. I believe that's Ezekiel, the 12th chapter that goes into Ooh, it, man. You know, how the Heavenly Father is not going to prolong his word anymore, man. Right. Hey, Salaki, in the back, you up, like it says, we would have healed Babylon, but she's not healed. They, they, you know, this nation, its economy is not going to come back. Mm-hmm. This economy is collapsing, like it says. He says, the heathen nations, let us go every man into his own country. That's another scripture backing up how the heathen are going to flee America, man. Right. That's right. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 12. I'll read it for you, brother. Start at verse 21. Ezekiel 12 and 21. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is it? That pro- what is that proverb that ye have in the land of Israel, saying, The days are for long and every vision failed? Mm. So that's like liking unto now. You got people, especially Jake, that's content. They're settled on their leaves. They're coming in the spirit of where's the promise of his coming. When I was young, my grandmama said, yeah, I wish I was going to come, and I'm 50 now. Where, where, when is he going to come? So that's like the scripture says, the vision fell. But we know that the vision is not going to fail. But going back to Habakkuk, the second chapter, the vision is yet for an appointed time. Got it? Go ahead, bro. Back you up. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3, said, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Hey, the brother I don't want just said, we at the end. How do we know we have to end? Because Esau is in rulership. As it is written in 2nd Ezra, the 6th chapter, Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed, man. Right. You know? Don't drop yours, brother. Don't drop yours. But go ahead and finish on your It says, for the vision is yet, yet for the vision is yet for a point of time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it shall surely come. It will not tarry. That's right, man. So it will surely come, it will not tarry. Speaking about these prophecies, oh, you got it, brother. Verse 23, tell them, therefore, thus saith the Lord power, I will make this proverb to cease, and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel, but say unto them, the days are at hand, and the effect of every vision. That's right, man, the days are at hand. Can a brother get Revelation chapter 1, verse 3, Bible Kishaw, man? The days are at hand, man. Where well, the heavenly father is gonna is gonna visit the world which he created, man. And how is he gonna visit? By these prophecies, man. Also by judgment, man. The judgment that's about to happen on this planet Earth is gonna generate fear, man. Everybody's gonna know that the heavenly father he is who he is, man. That's his name. He is, he exists, Yahweh, man. And then also the elect of the nation of Israel are gonna know Yahweh Shah. 
he says he delivers because he's going to deliver the elect out of the nation of Israel, man, as well as the one third, man. He said Revelation one and three. Bro, so no, one and three. It's a revelation, the first chapter, verse three, and it reads, blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of his prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. The time is at hand, man. Okay, what time is at hand? That the, hey, the heavenly father is going to send his only begotten son, Yahweh Shah, not only to destroy this place, but to deliver the elect of his people, man. You know? Right. God, it says, uh, Blesses he that readeth that they hear the words of this prophecy. Right. You know, to not only hear, but to also understand. So going into that, that was also going back to what I said earlier. You know, a lot of people say, oh, I read the Bible before. Well, well what understanding? Yeah. Well, what spirit did you have? Yeah. You know, who, who taught you? What the hell do you know? What's the name of the heavenly father going to be God's son? What are the prophecies that are coming to pass? What are the prophecies that are in here? And what are the details about it? Do horsemen actually mean men on horses or missiles? Hey, and a lot of the time when people say they read the Bible, man, they just reading it from Genesis, Genesis to Revelation like it's a, a, uh -huh. just a regular book. They don't really read and understand what they're reading, man. They just go through it. They read the first chapter. They don't even remember what happened in the first chapter. They just, all right, continuing on, continuing on. Uh -huh. You know, you can't read this Bible like an old, nasty, white guy. He, the, John. Nah, man, you got to really get into this thing, man. You got to go into secular history. Man. You got to go into archaeological findings. Um, you have to understand that there's dark sayings, there's parables, there's literal meanings. You know, you got double entendres, triple entendres. You, you think your artists are raw with their words. The Lord is even better. Yeah, I got you. But this is Isaiah chapter 28, verse 7. So like this. Let's start at verse 9. And it reads, Who shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk, and draw from the breast, man. You see? So it's an order in this thing, man. In order for you to understand this wisdom, knowledge, understanding, not only has the Lord put on his spirit, he has to put his spirit upon you, but you have to come on under the right ordinances, man. Learn from true teachers, man, that have the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, man. Okay? And it says, for precept must be upon precept, the precept upon, upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. So like the brothers going into, you can't just start from Genesis and read it like a regular book, chapter to chapter. You have to read it with precept upon precept, line upon line. You got to those different salafi, if I cut you off. Because different chapters, you know, they go into different times of history. You know, you might be going to 70 AD, you know, pushing forward, but more backwards. You got to have that understanding. This Bible is written as, as a mystery, man. It's a puzzle. And, and you have to unlock it. You have to know the code to unlock it. The brother was talking about puzzles earlier. If you only have five pieces, man, you don't, pieces just don't plug into each other all in one. You gotta right. gotta pull pieces apart from different sectors, sections, man. That's why you gotta, you know, you gotta know how to lean and, and use the body of Yahweh Shai. You can't be prideful and think, oh, the most high is dealing with me directly and only me. You know, I, I don't need what the hell you're saying. I, I got my way. I know the most high. I had an individual boy, but you got to be I did Psalm 78 and 1. Give ear, O my people, to my law, and find your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark things of old. And that's what God was written in a parable. And you, know, you got to have the spirit to understand it. You just don't pick it up and read it and then say, you know, I know what it's saying. You got to really understand you know, the dark parable. You know what I'm saying? God, for example, I asked Brother Adam Juan, you can go after me. Huh? I asked Brother Adam Juan, uh, how do you know certain things or how do you understand certain things more vivid? You know, he told me, not only you got to research it, but you got to, it's repetition. You know, you, you might read something three times, you, on that fourth, fifth, sixth time, that's when you, you got the complete whole breakdown, Lord willing. Uh, and you, you might lose certain things, you know, but you got to keep going back into it. That's right. It's like working out. Uh, working out a muscle. What you don't use, you lose. That's right. You right. speaking of uh, certain things that happen in your life? Oh, no, uh, instant with a Jake. You know, he know he hit him. He got a t-shirt for so, you know, but he was trying to justify about you could smoke weed in the Bible, you know? So it's just to show you that if you don't come under the right ordinances, you are not going to get weaned from the milk, man. You know, and drawn from the breast. And you, uh, no, you got it. I, I was going to say, when you smoke it, and you reading the scriptures, the spirit not going to deal with you at your full potential. Okay, so because the scripture says wisdom shall not enter into a malicious soul, and you're supposed to glorify the Lord in your temple. 
You're not supposed to defile your temple. All right? And, and there's different things that defile your temple. Whether you eat unclean foods, you do unclean acts like smoking and shit. That's right. You got to watch what you put in your body, man. Because you, you, you're going to feel the after effects. I remember, uh, you know, it's kind of vulgar, but I remember one time we accidentally ate some defiled spinach. You know, we went to the restaurant and we was hoping that the spinach would be defiled. That bitch had crab in it. But we ain't know too. you know, we was a few scoops in. You know? And then later on when I used the bathroom, my 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 uh bowel movements smell way worse than they usually do. Man. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, bro, that's that fucking defiled food, bro. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So that's supposed yeah. to show you what you put in really does affect your body. And and you know, even when you drink too much and you get drunk and you get that hangover, you start feeling through your spirit yeah, afterwards. Because yeah, yeah. what you put in that can affect you, man. Right. You eat junk food, you're gonna feel lethargic, tired, you know what I'm saying? You got the itis now. It's because what you put in can affect your spirit, man. Yeah. That's why we have a dietary law. That's why we have the law of statutes and commandments so that our flesh can operate at the highest frequency. You know what I'm saying? And so our spirit can operate at the highest frequency. Right? Well, especially like you said, the, the itis. You know, coming up, especially from, you know, you know, uh, our respective backgrounds before entering this, this ministry, we thought the itis was okay. I thought the itis was okay. When you eat, you're supposed to get the itis. That means you ain't good, right? <laughs> no, nah, but as you get older, you, you especially coming into this wisdom knowledge understanding, food is supposed to energize you. Right. It's, it's not supposed to make you feel uh, sluggish. sluggish. Like, like the brother said, I'm trying to pronounce the word lethargic. 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 You know what I'm saying? So, again, that's why man, you have to what? Follow the dietary laws, man. A lot of our people, the reason why, you know, they might have underlying health conditions. Is they're not following the thing that was sent for them, man. You got it, uh, Ecclesiastes 10 and 16. Woe to thee, O lad, when thy king is a child and thy princes eat in the morning. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So this place, their, their king is a child. He saw he's, he's very childlike with his rulership. And child also represents insignificant, man. That's why Job said, they that are younger than I have me in Jerusalem. It says, it says, and princes eat in the morning, man. You know? Really, in the morning time, that's that's the time when you're supposed to refrain from eating, man. You know, you, you eat later off in the day, more towards around, you know, 10 o'clock, noon. You know, if you eat breakfast, you ain't going off. But it's better for your body to eat later on in the day. Yep, yep, yep. You know, it's not good to just stuff your face first thing in the morning. They teach us that at Babylon. Yep, yep. Breakfast, lunch, yeah. dinner, yeah. and, 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 and snacks in between. Go ahead. Nah, it's lucky. And uh, also, they teach you, it's backwards. They tell you that breakfast is the most important meal. So they make sure you try, you don't skip that one, man. Right. This place is all backwards, man. Yeah, really, that always goes back into the, uh, the economic system with this restaurant. The same thing with the uh, food table, man. You know, they even put pork on there. They put shrimp on it. You know? But it really just to keep their uh, money flowing and going, man. Just so they can have and serve you at all times. Because that goes back into putting food on the table. You know what I'm saying? They know you got to depend on food. So therefore, you keep buying food and money on their account. How could they ever be broke? You buy their defiled food, you end up going to their doctors, man. You end up addicted to their pills, man. It's all a cycle to keep you enslaved, man. You use their cemetery, you use their medicine, right? Their water, whatever. Ecclesiastes 10 and 17. Blessed are thou, O land, when thy king is the son of nobles. So we got to have a ruler class mentality. We have, a no we have to have a noble mentality, man. You know, we have to have a noble vibration about us, man. What do you keep reading? Then Eleazar, Eleazar, he didn't even want to fake like he ate some swine flesh, man. Right. That's how it says he was a principal man. It's just to show you that he didn't even want to fake it, man. Right. So like the brother said, we're supposed to be what? We're supposed to have a sense of what? We're supposed to have a sense of dignity. The Lord likens unto a, 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 a royal priesthood. What is that in the book of Peter? He says that we're a what? Oh, man. Now, that's a but in the book of, uh, I think, Second Peter, he likens us unto a royal a generation, a royal priesthood, you know, royal people. Eating <laughs> under far food, even though they like it unto a delicacy, that's really, I'm trying to think of the word, man. Nah, I'm telling you, like, uh, poor shrimp, cabal, lobster, pork. You tell them, right? Yeah, they, 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 they esteem it as delicacies, but those are actually slave abomination. Abomination. The water, bro. Those are really, uh, cruel stations. 
on their bed to breathe. They trying to catch their breath really while they're trying even trying to sleep, man. Uh, man. It's tough, yep. That's why sometimes you know people who are heavier they they they, they got you know they breathe funny. Yep. Got it, right. Uh, verse 20 sound sleep come into the moderate eating be rising early and his wits are with him. Right. Because when you don't eat a lot you actually it's easy for you to wake up in the morning. But when you eat a lot your body's still tired because breaking down all that food yep, that yep, you yep. ate late at night and in the hours before. But what's the, it's, it's a certain time you should be eating. Yep. Sunday? Yep, yep. Sunday. Yeah, you got, you got actual cells that are made to bring your sleep to your food. You know, and, and they work harder and they work better when the sun is up. Nah, because, uh, I was just going to say, when the sun is up, that's when you usually, uh, during your activities, when you usually get the things done, that's when you got to uh, exert yourself in the energy that you have. Right. Uh, to see what all. But the pain of watching is colder and pain through the belly are with the unsatiable man. Yeah, man who can never be satisfied, he gonna get them belly pains. He gonna get them pains. And colder means sickness. sickness. If you eat too much, that can make you sick, man. You got it, brother. Verse 21, and if thou hast been forced to eat, arise, go forth, vomit, and thou shalt have rest. Go ahead, my uncle. Yeah, if you, if you eat too much, you know, what do they call those those girls? Bulimic? Where they, where they go over, they stick their, fit, their hand in their mouth to throw up? They're going off because they don't eat enough. But if you eat too much, yo, make yourself throw up, man. You'll have rest. You'll have rest. But Babylon teaches you to eat, to do everything in, in excess, man. And Jake said, snacks in between. That's snacks in between. That's what yep. they teach you. Yep. Yeah, that's three meals a day, drink your milk. Yep. Your milk. Oh, milk. That's heavy, bro. Hey, you're not going to cut any brothers off. If you go 
to the dumpster behind this Jimmy John's or if you go behind this sushi, this, this sushi place, you're literally going to see food that have, they made, but nobody can eat it. Yeah. That's what all of these corporations do. They make all the meals and nobody buys it. So what happens to the food? They have to be thrown in the garbage. And there's a law to where you can't even feed homeless people with the food. So they make excess. And I mean, this place is truly, it's truly winning, man. It's confusing, that's right. Yeah, I, I think a brother uh, said like America eats like, basically uh, America, the nation of America eats like most of the food in the world. But that's what it's to say. That's why. Uh, uh, Babylon is given to pleasures. Right. Eating food is a pleasure. Now, I was going to say, and I believe, too, if I'm not mistaken, Babylon has the highest rate of uh, obesity in the world. Yep. Right. So eating food is a pleasure, but for you smart asses out there, you are supposed to eat food on the Sabbath day, man. Let's, let's say you made a deal with the Lord and you was going on like a seven-day fast. Your fast episode to, you know, a, a Sabbath day happens to land in between that seven days. You know, you, you hold that fast. You made a deal with the Lord. But the Sabbath day is a feast day. So that is a pleasure that we're allowed to uh, take into on the Sabbath, man. It's talking about not doing your pleasure on the Sabbath. It's talking about not having sex right. and doing shit that you usually do on a regular day. You sanctify the Sabbath day, you keep it holy, man. Right. You know? Because. Also, in Babylon the Great is no more than food waste. As far as food waste, yeah, food waste. Yep. It's the care of the city. Care of the city. You no, know? but see, they go, they, they go, be, they ain't gonna be wasting food and taking trouble. No. Hell no. Nah. Because famine is coming, man. And see, a lot of you people, you cannot go a day without eating. A lot of people can't go a couple hours without eating, man. You yeah, you go into the restaurants, if somebody has to wait more than 10 minutes for their food, uh, they go and ape shit, man. Right, right. I've been waiting here 10 minutes, ah, and they don't got nowhere to be. <laughs> they just hungry. You know what I'm saying? See, she a little demon. Oh, man. She's gonna say the name of the Lord. What those long nails? Okay, that's good. I'm, I'm happy for you, okay? I said most of these people. I ain't saying that. She said she can eat a couple hours without eating. That's good, young lady. You know where your father's from? She ain't can't. Yeah. Yeah. You and his wife? He's from here. Yep. Might be a Judah. Yep, I believe so. So why'd you come up here? You guys be safe, okay? All right, that's good. Y'all be safe, okay? We're, we're about to wrap this up. Y'all be safe. Yeah, it's okay. Thank you. Be careful, guys. That was good. Matter of fact, somebody get that scripture in Second Kings about the two she bears. Second Kings two and twenty, Bubba. Wow. <laughs> So King chapter 2, verse 20. Wait. And it reads. And I, I'm not sure if it's verse 20, but where, where it says, go up thou fall head, go up yep, thou yep, fall. Yep. It's towards Religion. the end of the chapter. Religion. Yep. We learned in about it's two. What's this? That's good. Okay. That's good. That's good. Can you guys go back to where I was at for us, please? Oh, yeah. 23 so off here. The book of 2 Kings, chapter 2, verse 23. And it reads. And he went up from thence until Bethel, or Salaki, until Bethel. And as he was going up by the way, there came forth little children out of the city and mocked him and said, Go unto him and go up, thou bald head, go up, thou bald head. So, like we were saying earlier, man, them wicked ass children, man, fuck them wicked ass children, man. If you're not a one third child, you a little two third baby, fuck you, man. Because you, because they come in that same spirit. Stop it. I don't believe nothing you guys say. Look at the age she had. But that's, she a demon. That's, okay. that's why the Lord gonna slay these little niggas. You got it, brother. Go ahead. So you had little wicked ass children making fun of the prophets back then. Go ahead, brother. Uh, there's too much See, the spirit. Verse she 24. And he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the name of the Lord. And there came forth two she bears out of the woods and tear and forty-two children of them. And he went from thence to Mount Carmel, and from thence he turned to Samaria. Ahead, and, and, and the point was made that it was she bears. The most violent type of bear is a bear that cares for her cubs. Right. If you, if you, if, you, if a bear is caring for the cubs, man, she's gonna go, she's gonna go ape shit. All right. So the Lord sent two she bears to tear forty and two children on her, man. There's no remorse for children, men, women, or children, man. I got a quick three Back you up, my fellow. Proverbs seventeen and twelve. Let a bear robbed of her whelps be the man rather than a fool in his folly, man. 
bear robbed of her wealth, man. Yep. A lot of uh, female animals, when you mess with their babies, they go crazy. Yep. So how much more, you know, hey, a, a, a she bear, you know? Hey, they gonna see, man. Y'all seen that? Uh, no, it's probably, but I was gonna say that episode of uh, SpongeBob where Sandy is hibernating. Come hell yeah. You know, yeah. she had that demon on her. Uh-huh. Hey, you gonna see the wild beast play on the little wicked ass children, man. That little girl might get fucking eaten by a wild animal, man. Yep. Her wicked ass. I remember last time she came over there, we was over there. She's saying, in the name of the Lord is Jesus. Yep. Being a demon, man. Fuck that girl, man. Any girls to lock it? Any girls got any final? Nah, we have, yeah, we have, yeah, we don't have a lot. Oh, Ezekiel 9 and verse 5, and to the other who said in my hearing, go ye after him through the city, and smite, that now your eyes turn, neither have ye pity. Stay utterly old and young. Stay like, utterly old and young, man. Let there your eyes have pity, man. The Lord don't give a shit how old or young you are, man. If your ass wicked, you going to get put to death, man. All yeah. right. Both right. maids, both maids and little children. And little children, man. And okay. women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark and you get in my sanctuary. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of these young children, you know, they got something to look forward to in the day to day, you know. Lord don't care about that. Lord, you know, Lord don't give a fuck. Right? Lord don't give a fuck about no age, man. How many children died in the flood, man? Right. How many pregnant women died in the flood? Lord right. don't give a fuck about no age, man. That's if you're right. wicked, you're going to get put to death. Man, woman, child, small, great. Same it don't thing. matter, man. Yep, Moses yep. Dash to pieces, like the brother Kabar said. They're going to be dashed to pieces. Hey. Eat my children. That and even little Jake children are going to be dashed to pieces too when Jake in trouble. But Esau is going to be dashed to pieces. Yep, 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 yep. The Heavenly Father is the ultimate. It's a lot of y'all should call song. He's the ultimate, not respective person. Yep, yep, yep. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, with that. Yep, go ahead. I'm, I'm, hey, so we're going to close out with that. You know, Alvarado is out of Bill's head of fire. All right? Yep. We want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, Hashem, Double honors to the apostles and elders, great Muslim that do rule up and teach well, man. All right? Peace and blessings to the elected Israel, you so called Black, Hispanics, and Native Indians, and along with you, Islam quarters. You are the true children of Israel. You need to repent and come back to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, You heathen nations are going into slavery, man. All right? Judgment is coming to America. You need to repent, right. man. All right. Shalom and above above. Shalom above above. 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 Above above.